did a two hour stream oh. and then fucking and then I don't want to do another two hours. I haven't even had a chance to lay down and chill. And I want to play my right, game. Right. I'm just gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna have. Play oh, listen, I'm gonna have Twitch open in the background, so you're still gonna get views and also probably dick around in the chat a little bit. Oh, no. All right. All right. Well, first I'm gonna yeah, go. I'm too. going to go. I'm going, going to have go your ahead. Funs, buddy. Let me go right. ahead and be right back in two oh. minutes. Go ahead and start the show. Oh shit! Someone's <laughs> beating someone's ass in the background. I know, right? Poor man. Fuck that fly. ass, boy. <laughs> All right, what's going on over there? All right, night. I hope you, yeah, y'all have a good stream. All right. All right. It's tomorrow. <laughs> good God. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I don't know what we're doing, but I think we're live. I think we're good to go. You I don't know. So you can tell me, mean. chat, if we're good to go. Are we good to go? Uh, I mean, I, I guess don't so. I not know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I would tend to have music play while we're just waiting, but nowadays, because we're always usually in calls already beforehand, it it just became like, nah, we're just going to hit the stream record button and just automatically just chit-chat away for the next two hours or so. So let me just see if the Twitch chat can hear everybody fine. Audio sounds fine. All right, so wait, that makes me happy to hear. Hello, everybody. We are back again for another chit chat of a talk for the pod stuff and uh hopefully tonight's gonna be a good one obviously we got a lot of people here so let's go and uh introduce everybody before we actually begin our full-on session so uh beginning off we got tyrone the god three yep. uh we got tss of course which i'm not sure if he's back yet but he wants to do something uh we got richie hey 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 and last but not least we got our buddy uh polly Hello. Or Age of Trades, however you wish to go by. So, folks, uh, as I mentioned before, we're going to have a lot of fun for tonight. We're going to go and take this opportunity to talk about uh, just whatever we feel like talking about. I do want to throw some updates here in a bit, uh, but I'm going to go take care of something in the background first before I get into that. So, as we progress and wait a little bit, uh, just to chat away with the community for a little bit. I will be right back. So, apologies on that, folks. Uh, yeah, the host in this timing folks. terrible. Right, how is everyone doing? How is everyone doing? In the chat, of course. Yes. Yes, I'm alive. Oh, yeah, Tyro, you want to talk about that deal? Wait, what? The Bethesda deal? Oh, I mean, there wasn't really much to say about it because Bethesda bought out, apparently, uh, was bought out by Microsoft. Yep. And I thought that originally meant, okay, that means the new Elder Scrolls game is going to be an Xbox exclusive, but it's not going to be because, like, you can get on PC, and that's fine because I'm a PC gamer now, so. Yeah, some of those games could be on PC, so. So it, it went from being fucked up news to neutral news, and I'm just like, okay, I can live with that. Yeah, I could probably go All with right. that as well. Tessa, what do you think about the deal? What do what you want? The Bethesda deal, however you pronounce it. Bethesda? Festa. Bethesda. Bethesda. Oh, the, oh, the Bethesda sorry. thing. Okay. Yeah, 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 sorry. I can't pronounce it. Uh, yeah, the Bethesda thing. Um, Okay. I have no real negative connotations on that, considering that I don't really own PlayStation consoles like modern ones. So, whatever. It's just PC and Xbox. It's fine with me. Some of them are going to be on PC anyways, so... Yeah, All right, so, I am back now. What are we talking about here? I can't. I'm not. I'm not saying it anymore. You guys do it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, so my, the Microsoft buying out Bethesda thing. Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. So I guess to kind of clarify as to what the heck is going on regarding that, um, apparently, yeah, Microsoft has acquired the company. That I believe is responsible for all these titles, ID, you know, Bethesda and all that. Uh, yeah, Microsoft just straight up bought them out for like seven point five billion dollars, which is absolutely insane to me. And of course, with this, there's a lot of controversy happening because nobody knows what the direction that they, uh, that Microsoft or Bethesda is intending to go in this route. Um, Obviously, one of the biggest mysteries regarding this is, like, 
what could this possibly mean for platform or not platforms? I'm sorry, platforms in terms of like PlayStation Switch. Are they gonna still contain uh games exclusively on the Microsoft side of things on PC and on Xbox One or Xbox Series S? Uh, what does this mean for upcoming franchises, sequels that were already in development that were gonna be exclusive to other systems? You know, there is a lot to kind of go around for this. Honestly, I think this purchase is. Very significant because it's really showing just how important gaming is becoming lately because exclusivities are kind of the thing that pull the franchises forward or consoles forward, you know, because when you think about it for PlayStation 5, what they got Final Fantasy exclusivity, uh, they got Spider-Man, you know, Avengers stuff like it's stuff like this that uh, that pushes console forward. So Microsoft honestly made a very smart decision with this one where they actually got the, uh, where they got this and, uh, got this. I'm getting the new Elder Scrolls for the PC, so I won't have to deal with it. Yeah. Well, I, the only thing I'm just kind of curious is, uh, well, I don't know what they're going to do. Like, I'm legitimately curious, like what's going to happen to that new Bethesda IP that they talked about Starlink or whatever it was from E3 2020. 18 or something if you remember that i don't know the only one i cared about was elder scrolls yeah and of course literally during during every bethesda announcement i'm just looking at it like just show me elder scrolls i don't don't just show me the logo and i'll be fine so that's literally all they did that's literally all we know about elder scrolls 6 right now is that they just showed the logo and that's it and i'm like give me the fucking game already give me a date give me something pathetic (laughs) <laughs> Buffetic. <laughs> Buffetic, right? It's someone well, then again, no, well, then again, though, remember, Bethesda is the same uh, is the same company that decided to put fucking DRM on Doom One, Two, and Three someone games. Put- that, Doom One and Two are fucking twenty twenty five year old games, and they have fucking can DRM. Someone put, can someone put the the fucking Microsoft president looking down, going pathetic? <laughs> Buffetic. <laughs> or Paul? We need Paul. Yeah, I'm Paul. <laughs> Buffetic. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I was telling Richie earlier, I was like, it turned, it was bad news at first, but to me, then it turned into neutral news. And I was just like, oh yeah, that's right. I can just get it on the PC. Yeah, because okay. initially you thought that it Fuck was, it. uh. I thought it was going to be an Xbox. Include. I was about to lose my fucking mind. Yeah, you would have. Now, I just want people to be reminded that, uh, that th- th- this is <laughs> the, the pricing, first of all, on this thing is absolutely insane. Seven point five billion dollars. Dollars. All right. Let's put that into pers- let's put that into mind here for a second. I just want you to think about the fact that these man's buns here are worth seven point five billion dollars. Like, god damn, man. What the? F- Why are we looking at this? Because well, that's- two, two two shake two shakes of a soldier's ass. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's nothing new. Well, that, exp- that explains it. All right. Yeah, yeah. so to just understand that this is pretty much what they've spent their money on. And boy, oh, shit. now <laughs> I am excited only because of the fact that this could potentially mean we could I wonder if this guy I wonder if that guy used NADS on his ass. <laughs> NADS on. <laughs> Ever remember NADS, the freaking thing where you saw the infomercial back in the early two thousands yes. where you, you know you know the freaking the, the cream that you put on hot and then you the wax shit. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. so probably paid, probably paid seven point five billion dollars just to wax the guy's ass. Now, another thing that people are talking about that I think many fans are excited for is um, Bethesda Game Studios, alongside with another company in particular, uh, that being of Obsidian Games. Now, of course, many folks might not uh, know about this, but to those who do. Uh, you know, obviously, this is a very important deal. So, uh, to clarify, what's happening here is that Fallout New Vegas, if I'm correct, was worked alongside with Obsidian before, which is, uh, I believe, a part of uh, Microsoft's company or Microsoft's, you know, staff of companies. So, now that Bethesda is now a part of that studio, many folks are hoping to see that maybe there could be a chance that Obsidian Entertainment and Fallout New Vegas could merge together once again to create a brand new Fallout game. Now, I don't know what this could mean for the future, but it is something exciting to kind of think about, honestly. So, yeah. I don't, like, what do you guys think about this? Like, overall, in terms of, like, the Bethesda and Microsoft Unity that we're getting uh, today, like, overall, what do you guys think of that? I actually do have a small comment, but it has, doesn't have to do with the 
uh, sale, sorta. Um, I know the price tag is big and all, but um, but I actually think them losing out on the whole TikTok thing because remember Microsoft was sort of involved in that as one of the bidders, buyers, or whatever term you want to use. Mm -hmm. I think go I think going from that to here was better because obviously TikTok is one is like trendy. Like if if something trendy goes down, then it never really recovers. So for them to go from so for them to go from failing to get uh TikTok to this video game company, which is popular with you know a good amount of video game fans. I think this is probably the best rebound that they can ever hope for. So I so I'm very interested in seeing how this uh goes moving forward. I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah. Mm. I, I, you know, mm. it's very early to tell right now because this well, just happened less than 24 hours ago. Well, of course. Yeah, exactly. to be perfect to be perfectly honest, I am not um interested in any of Bethesda's modern IPs. Like I'm into classic Doom and stuff, but I CPS really don't says, care. Uh, once you play Elder Scrolls, you're not gonna say that. Well, my brother, my brother clocked like probably 300 hours in fucking Morrowind. Play Skyrim. No. Well, we... Skyrim, Skyrim, he has about 300 hours too. Play Skyrim. Trust me, TSS. It'll, it'll change. Yeah, it. yeah, but yeah, but the problem is they release Skyrim six fucking times. I'm gonna say it's really right. gonna get Skyrim on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> It's, it's on every I don't console. care. I'll just go. I'll just go on fucking CD keys deals and fucking buy that shit, or not CD keys deals on the other fucking site. You can buy get it like on three dollars. Phone, like, like you can get it on anything. No, nah, nah, I don't care. I'm. Yeah. I am not. I am not one of those things. No. The only thing. The only. The only. The only thing. The only thing good about those games was stop. You have violated the law. That's it. Uh, fuck it. Go to get the fuck out. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Sky, Skyrim's a treasure. Yeah. Uh, I still have my copy of Skyrim. I do too. My Xbox yeah, you know, you know, and, and, and great, yeah, great, Switch, great stuff. You know, my let, Alexa. let you let you play that. Right. I still hey have Alexa. Hey my Alexa. How many bitches can I fit in a Tesla? You know, that's a song, right? <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> you can fit two hundred and eighty-five bitches in your Tesla. Beep. Well, thank you for that answer. I wasn't expecting to hear that, but I'll take it anyway. Now then, uh, ooh, I forgot my water, actually. I yeah, I see, Donnie, Donnie agrees with me. He agrees with me there. Yeah. And but yeah, I, I was at first, um, uh, scared to, uh, scared that it was going to be an exclusive only for Xbox, just because that means I would have to get an Xbox to experience the next Elder Scrolls game, and I was like, fuck that. <laughs> Thank you, Yoshi Knight, for following. Hey, thank you, Yoshi Knight. Woo! Yoshi Knight coming up. How's, the, how's the streamer not oh, saying oh, that? Oh, welcome to the pod. Welcome to the pod. You said what, Rich? How's the streamer not announcing that? Where you because, because yeah, because because KG never watched it. Well, also also he left. Also he had to leave for a couple. Yeah, of we got to buy time. You have to buy some time. Um, <laughs> but after after the Bethesda stuff, right. um, we're gonna be talking about. The game that came out over the weekend. Oh, yeah. Don't we have to talk about the Sony press conference? The what now? Sony. Oh, yeah. The they they had a conference, didn't they? Yeah, we had a whole price drop and some games okay, and everything. Okay, but before we get into that, first of all, let's do, let's have a nice little round of applause because we actually reached 700 followers here on Twitch. Wow. Thank you to the community so much for Thank all you. the love and support yeah. for that. It's absolutely humbling and... Uh, Thank you guys for still sticking around, even after all the shenanigans that have happened. You all are the ones that make this happen. Exactly. You guys have changed us for the better, and hopefully you guys will continue to join us every week, as well as our other various little silly shenanigans sessions that we tend to do here on this channel. So, How are you doing, Comet? Uh, thanks once again, everybody. Now, there are a lot of things that I've been working on behind the scenes, you know, just fun little things. Even now, you can actually check in the chat. Uh, if you notice that... Um, in the little points section, we actually converted the new point system into uh, into Pokey Points with a little cute Gumi icon right there as well alongside it. So it's just nice little uh, little details that we've been doing. These are mainly points that normally tend to be used during uh, our you know video Gaming. game sessions. So if you ever want to come around, yeah. So so don't waste around. so so folks don't waste your points on the freaking yeah podcast, because, because like you're, 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 you're no, not gonna what see the hell? my plushies right now. You're not gonna see anything. It's like. I mean, I, I can hold my controller in reverse for the people who so, donated, so, but so not here's the thing. Action. So you watch us. So you watch us here on the podcast, 
and then you gather up those points, and then when oh, and KG time. does the video game stuff. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna straight up have ads this whole minute, man. Alright, but yeah, so it's just silly shenanigans like that, you know. You guys just have fun with it. Uh but thank you once again, everybody, for just sticking around. Uh, for being here, supporting the channel, helping us gain up to 700 followers. We hope to continue to grow here. Make sure to also follow everybody here as well right. who are having their own respective uh, Twitch channels as well. You know, links to their Twitter Hello, accounts is in the description below. All that kind of good jazz. Uh, but thank you guys so much. And I hope you guys, you know, continue to enjoy all of the fun shenanigans we have for tonight. So now then, I apologize, uh, TSS. I. You know, we, we took this chance to say congrats to all the 700 followers here. But um, now we can talk a little bit about those two things we have really got to miss out on. Um, that being of the Sony press conference as well as the, the game of the year. Can I go last for that? Uh, for which yeah. one, Mario or for, for Sony? Yeah. Uh, so, Sony, because I imagine you guys have a lot to say for that. So I'll just go last. All right, Tyrone, did you want to go as well for that? For the PlayStation 5? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> At first, I will say, as a presentation, they did a good job showing off games. They did a good job showing off games. Here's the problem, and it sort of threw off my momentum, because Terrell actually uh, spoke about this in the chat, and it hit me, and I was like, damn, you're right. I can't wait to get a, P a PS5. They did it in a way that got me hyped to buy the PS5. Like, oh, shit, November's going to be the shit. November's going to be a great month for video games just in general. It's coming out November 12th. You got two prices. Uh, I'm norm I'm going to get the more. I wanted to get the more expensive one because I still like collecting video game discs. It's just like having them, holding them in my hands. Um, but I'm old school. Um then you got the digital version, which is, uh, what, $400? Yeah. Yeah, you got the digital version, which is $400. You got the physical version, which is, uh, which is $500. Nice prices. They sort of put uh, Xbox in a little chokehold because, essentially, if you get the digital version, you're getting a PS5. You're just getting a PS5 minus the ability to take on physical disc, which the future is coming down to digital downloads anyway, so I get it. Um... So not bad, not bad, not bad of a deal for a hundred dollars less for a console. Normally, when consoles come out, they're six hundred to five hundred dollars. So four hundred isn't that bad. Um, afterwards they kept showing games. The big one being uh, Spider Man with Miles Morales. Because I don't think this one's Spider Man Two. It's supposed to be Spider Man. No, it's a continuation. Miles Morales. Yeah, it's, it's Spider Man Miles Morales. Basically, I mean, basically the 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 um the fake gentrified Harlem. Thing. Yeah. Great. And so far, it looks good, but here's their biggest problem. Uh, much like Breath of the Wild, um, it's released for both the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4. So it kind of acts as the reason to get a PlayStation 5 right away. Because if they had just sold it for the PS5, they would have shot themselves in the foot, obviously. Um, and they did that because it's, it's a launch release. So they're like, hey, you want to get the this game that goes alongside it? Um, unfortunately, that shot my momentum. The rest of the games, I think, are going to be released on other consoles or the, the ones that are exclusive. We don't have much information about. Uh, but other than that, it looks cool. I am going to wait, though. I'm going to wait for a price drop. I'm going to wait till, you know, the price has gone down. People have been buying the <laughs> first versions. You're also going to have to wait for them to actually even go back in stock, if anything. <laughs> Or, 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 yeah. or if anything, you can end up on YouTube on the fail on the uh, the broken console compilation. Well, yeah. And hey. if, if anything, yeah, I was going to say, if anything, if I wait a while, one, that means a price drop will come in because everybody would have already bought them. So it gives them time to restock. And mm -hmm. two, they're more than likely probably going to come out with like a version that has more memory or slightly slimmer or some gimmick. Like they always do, that'll be around the same price, and I can just buy that version. The Plus, problem, I, I want to imagine a lot of people are going to be buying digital version, well, so it makes the physical versions may drop, may drop uh, in price faster. The, the issue, the issue is, and this is, and this is actually a take that Terrell had, but I have uh, something to key off of that. The biggest problem right now is that you have the Xbox Series X and the Series S, and then the uh -huh. other one which have one terabyte of SSD storage. Yeah. 
Right. The problem is the PlayStation 5 will only have 825 gigs. Mm-hmm. Now, that might not be a problem on the surface, but rumors say the new Call of Duty game is 200 plus gigs. What the fuck is the new Call of Duty 200 gigs? Because they're stupid. But that's not a, because it's Call of Duty. But that's not the issue. The other issue is if you know for the for the five people who didn't sleep through the technical press conference for the PS5 that happened about oh, 5 shit, months ago. I still did fall asleep during that. That it does support expandable M.2 SSD storage. However, you need to buy a specific one that will work. You need to find you need to buy ones that are that are guaranteed to work, that are that are tested to work. Because if you buy a cheap ass M.2 SSD, it's not going to work properly. Actually, and um, the storage is not going to be as fast. I do want to just discuss a little bit about the file sizes for some of the launch titles that are going to be on the PlayStation 5. We do get some gigabyte counts. Aside from the Call of Duty one that Tyrone has mentioned being something about 200, or was it UTSS that brought yeah, it up? No, it was, yeah, it was, it was UTSS. I was, just, I was just shocked by it. Uh, Demon Souls is going to be 66 gigabytes, whereas the Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition is going to be aimed at 105 gigabytes. So that means basically you can only fit like fucking four games on your console, and that's it. Pretty much, these four, games five are games. becoming huge, man. This is absolutely well. You have well. The problem is, well, here's the thing: you have 4K assets, which is textures, all that shit. You have sound, you have full voice acting, all this shit, high quality audio. Yeah. So yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be pretty much like like running out of space almost yeah. immediately within a ye- within within six months. You're gonna run out of space. Um, that's why you got to get an M.2 SSD to put in there. I as, think that's more of a reason for me to get the physical copy because, whoa, well, well, wouldn't that help you out in the long run? Well, no, no, because first of all, most of those are install discs, and number two, you still have to download updates. But then, what the fuck do you do? What the fuck are physical copies for? Install discs. <laughs> But you're already installing it when you download the game. So the physical copy is literally just a, a circle. You bought a, a, a plastic circle. Yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty much. much. Yeah. Oh well, it's my plastic circle with artwork. <laughs> Mine. Well, yours. yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, right, yeah. It's, it's physical, but but I'm just saying that, you know, that's that's the reality. The well, problem is the problem I'm is saying, not going to be a lot of storage. Well, when I when I build up collections, I'm starting to get bougie with it now. And, and here and here's the thing: I'm, I'm if you want in uh, tin cases, like metal tin cases and shit. I, I want I want to put something in the perspective here. If you wanted to buy like a one terabyte M.2 SSD that's actually fast enough to be considered to be compatible with the PS5, you're looking at probably two hundred dollars. Also, I also want to show off a little bit. Did you guys know about the size? I'm not talking about the file size that is in the storage. I'm talking about just the size in general. Have you guys seen how big it is compared to all the other systems? Well, specifically, let's take a look at the size of this PS5 alongside oh, this, shit. this I can't even TV take it over my living room. and the Nintendo <laughs> Switch. Oh, shit. It's taking over my living room. It's beating my wife and it's killing my kids. <laughs> I mean, I mean, okay. So thirty-nine millime- three hundred and ninety millimeters is thirty-nine centimeters. That's over right. a foot tall. And then we have about a hundred and four millimeters. That's fourteen mil- uh, fourteen centimeters wide. So that's about seven inches wide. So it's like over a foot tall. It's like the size of an X, ex- the original Xbox One, probably. Yeah. Now let me show you guys another image here because this person actually created multiple variations of this said image. Uh, here's another a look at it where you can take a look at it via uh it alongside the Xbox One. Oh, so it can go horizontal, sweet. Yeah, it can. Yeah, but yeah, but it's fucking huge. Yeah, it's a huge I mean, ass thing, man. I mean, yeah, I'm just, I know. I'm just saying, holy shit. Yeah, PS5 is a big boy. Yeah, so the- yeah, yeah, the refrigerator, the refrigerator Xbox One Series X. That's that's much just, better. Just just a reminder, folks. This man, Kevin. Once this as his living room ornament. And it looks beautiful, don't you, Dick? Ornament, yeah. yeah. Yeah, ornament, yes. I mean, I would love to have something like that. It looks very futuristic. I'm not... Oh, gonna... shit. I like that perspective. Yeah, yeah who took these pictures? <laughs> well, first of all, these are model Render. designs. Well, who, made, well, who made the designs, obviously? I, that's what I meant. Um, I like the little Halloween decorations, too. <laughs> uh, uh, Twitter user going under the name of K. Sawada uh, made all these... Um, designs to show off just how the xbox you know series x all goes alongside the playstation 5 the Switch, all that stuff 
I want to point out this hypothetical person here has enough money to have a PS4, two PS5s, a fucking <laughs> Xbox Series S and Series X, and a Switch. This person's bald. And even had enough change to buy some cute little pumpkin ornaments. Right, exactly. <laughs> here's, here's the other thing. So the he, so here's the kicker, though. Since since the since the PS5 is only gonna have two editions, we yeah. have the where where you have the Xbox One Series the S, which is gonna be three hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and it's yeah. fourteen and it's fourteen forty p. Right now, for most people, fourteen forty p is gonna be enough. Even now, I mean, if you look in the PC space, you see a lot of people still buying fourteen forty p monitors because that's all they need, like for like two forty hertz fourteen forty p monitors. People will buy that instead of buying like a 4K monitor just to get higher frame rate. And to be honest, the jump between 1440p and 4K is not as big as people think. Especially because it, it's of- going to cost more in terms of not just only uh, the graphics in itself, but more so yeah. just in general space, storage, all that shit. Uh, honestly, 4K graphics, is it still something that we really need in this day and age? Are we seriously Well, already- HDR, but, but, but still, you can have 1440p and oh, HDR anyway. Right. What? But it's like, but it's like, but, but, but seriously though, I mean, for, for people who just want to casually play games, I think, I, and, and they, they, they want a console, they just buy, just buy the Xbox One Series S for 300 bucks and 1440p. Did you look at the Discord chat? This me every time. Last. Me every time Bethesda doesn't show Elder Scrolls. Buffetic. Buffetic. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll show it for this the is, chat just so they can see what we're talking about. This is about. my last brain cell. I don't know a lot about this stuff, so I'm... I'm... No, no, this is perfect. This is literally me at E3 when they didn't show Elder Scrolls. <laughs> Buffetic. Buffetic. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> thank you omar rosales for the idea though i i have to give him credit because he's the one who said pathetic <laughs> so yeah i mean overall i honestly don't feel anything for uh for this leap into the next generation man i don't know no really. well i bought i bought it I, I bought an rtx 2060 which is kind of stupid but i bought it when it's 300 bucks they showed off. Uh, somebody get a list of the games they showed off for me. I'm just gonna say the ones I remember. I well, know they Final Fantasy, off- Final Fantasy 16, which I yeah, didn't even I was know was a fucking talking. Final Fantasy game. Yeah, I was gonna say I was just about to talk about TSS. You literally beat me to the punch. I was just about to say the only one I really kind of remember, sadly, was Final Fantasy 16. And you want to know why I remembered it? Because I didn't know it was a Final Fantasy game until. And the also, and also, the trailer for that. The, the trailer that was used in the PS5 presentation and the one that they uploaded were completely different. Because on the one, it said it said that it was a PC emulating the PS5 experience, which is like, okay, I saw, I saw so when the fuck is it going to be on the, when is the, fuck on the, is gonna be on the PC, right. PC now? It, yeah, I saw that. I was like, wait a minute, what? Yeah. yeah. There, was so, also no, there was also another one. Um, I, maybe you guys remember which game it was. But there was one where there was like, Oh, this one's gonna come. This one's gonna go on PC. And then on Twitter, it was later clarified that that part was not meant to be there. I think that might have actually been Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy, yeah. Yeah, that's. I, I saw that. I was like, wait a minute. Now, as a Final Fantasy fan, I do want to talk about this. Oh, go go for it. That was the worst Final Fantasy trailer Damn. I have in my goddamn life. You want it? And TSS already pointed out why. Why? Because I didn't even know it was a Final Fantasy game until the fucking logo showed up. It just looked like a, it just looked like a generic medieval it like, like a wow. Tales of game. <laughs> yeah. No, it, no, no. It looked like it, it looked like it looked like a ripoff of an Elder Scrolls game. It looked like a, a Renaissance like Tall Tales game. Like, what will you choose next? King Joshua's next fucking decision will determine your rest of your kingdom. And I'm like, you guys have stepped so far away from what you used to be. Final Fantasy used to be a J fucking RPG. And what that meant is that you had colorful characters with colorful personalities, with colorful backgrounds, with colorful settings, with a fantasy like feel. You would have monsters, the noticeable ones like the slime or the pyro or the toneberries or the fucking behemoths. You used to have these like 
colorful creatures, bright and colorful. You said these like anime looking characters with, with spiky hair and even the ones that weren't anime, like they made up for it with their edginess, but they were like, it was like a one character at a time edginess. And then you had your other characters that were just like, they, they popped, they, gave, they, they brought your attention. They made you invested in the world of Final Fantasy. I wasn't invested at all in that fucking trailer. In fact, I was literally just waiting for the next thing. And then when the title shows up and says Final Fantasy 16, I'm like, that, oh shit, that was a Final Fantasy? That's the next Final Fantasy game? Like even Final Fantasy 15 did better than this. And it, what tops it off, I get it. They're doing this because they're trying to connect more with the West, the Western audience. So what they're doing is that they're making it more of an action-based RPG, kind of like Kingdom Hearts is currently. They're making an action RPG. The problem is, is that Final Fantasy has stepped so far away from where it came from at this point. Is it even Final Fantasy? Like, it doesn't even feel like Final Fantasy anymore. And that's what bugged me about it the most. Mm. Like, it's sad when the Final Fantasy game trailer was something that I completely forgot about simply because it didn't do a good job being a Final Fantasy trailer. And if that's what we're getting, you can't even make the excuse, oh, well, it'll change later on when it comes out. Well, they can't change the story. They can't change the characters that were introduced. And I, unfortunately, from the looks of it, don't care for them. Now, I'm sure it probably has some deep story or something that i am got to get invested in myself. but. The outer layer of it looks boring, and ironically, it's because it looks realistic. But you play Final Fantasy to escape realism, so what yeah. the fuck are they doing exactly? Well, the answer to that is they hired they they had the they had the blender guy paid ten dollars to still make the fucking the intestinal segments that didn't fucking work on the last fucking presentation, but decided to still fuck around with Blender this time. Right. But it's like, realistically, like most of the majority of these games, they're coming out on PC. So at this point, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, like, that's I, literally Xbox. I, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, that's that's what it is. They're either multi-plats or they're going to be just time exclusives for Sony, and then it's going to come out on the, P the PC later. So realistically, I yeah. could care give a fuck less. So realistically and and the biggest problem as as Terrell mentioned like a couple of weeks back or a week a few a few days ago actually was that um a lot of these games are multi are um cross generational games and realistically there's really no reason to buy a PS5 right now not right now yeah there was nothing no. that they showed that made me go oh my god there's, no, there's like there's like there's like no well, like wow or anything like that yeah so realistically yeah, they, they really didn't nothing. show anything that was uh like the only up. the only thing i would say is maybe better hdr and ray tracing that's it hdr and ray tracing but we're not there yet we do there's going to be no development for that for at least one or two years and plus all the good games that people want to play they're coming out in fucking one or two years anyway mm. like grand yeah. Mode seven where the fuck is that oh that, that's yeah, gonna exactly. come like lex like fucking the gear after you know what i mean mm-hmm now, I know, because uh, a lot of people are putting this in the chat right now, I know they showed Demon Souls off, which that game already came out, so it's hard for me to get excited for a game that already came out. Uh, most of those games were just re-releases of games thank that... Thank you, uh, host. You said what? Thank you, Lightning, for the host. Oh, thank you, Lightning, for the host. Thank you so but yeah, most of, those games, most of those games that came out are games that already have come out for the... Uh, for a, for an older console, yeah. they do this. They do this a lot when a new console comes out because it's like, oh yeah, we definitely have games. Oh, we have uh, uh, Demon Souls. We have Spider Man and Spider Man uh, Miles Morales. Like, no, you don't. PS4 has those. You're just bringing them over because you ain't got shit yet. Demon yeah. Souls, I think, is a PS5 exclusive, is it? No, Demon Souls came out before. Oh, I mean the remake version. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a remake. It, like, it already happened. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is interesting that it is a launch title. I will say that might have been the seal of the deal for me personally to buy a PlayStation 5. As somebody who has never touched a PlayStation or owned one, mm. uh, 
for me personally, this is a very good investment, I'd say. Mm. Maybe not the investment for the f uh, digital version, per se, but most definitely nah, maybe. No, definitely, definitely not the digital. I don't, but well, they also advertise that you can download your older games. You just need to be a Plus member, right? Yeah. Now, the yeah. thing is, though, uh, right. my, my issue with this is that God damn it, I want a PS5 digital edition so bad because it's actually perfectly symmetrical. And I don't need to yeah. see that stupid looking dent that's on the other version. Oh, well, I'm getting mine because I'm a nerd and I like having physical games. And sometimes they give you metal tin, uh, metal tin cases, and I, I like metal tin cases. Yeah. I'm weird. I like the collectibles that come with the games. So did you buy that gold edition, Tyrone? No. <laughs> 8,000 euros. I, I yeah, tried, man. I signed up for it. I, I couldn't get it. As I've, as I've gotten older and I'm starting to collect games more, because ironically, my collect, my oh. collect, I stopped trading in games around the time that I started working at GameStop at like 14 or 15. Uh -huh. And then I, I started collecting games when I worked at GameStop. So I stopped trading mm -hmm. in games so I can add them to my collection so that I can have a game collection. Uh -huh. hmm. And for so, those of you who are younger who are watching this, don't trade in games. It's not worth it. Keep them in no. the long run. <laughs> I really yeah. worked at GameStop. Keep them. Yeah, I worked at GameStop. I actually wearing one of my work shirts now. When they were uh, when Proto Prototype Two came out. Mm. Huh. Yeah. So, actually, actually, what Donnie said in the chat is actually perfect because he said PS Vita. You know what game? You, you know what game got ported to PS Vita by folks by by very uh, talented folks? Super Mario sixty four. Oh, God. Which leads us to the next section. Yes. <laughs> so sounds so giddy about it. No, because it's cool. Because because Super Mario sixty four, the the whole um, decompilation project, it's been ported to the PC several months ago, and now we have versions for the PS two, the Dreamcast, and the Vita, which is and insane. Android. <laughs> now <laughs> and and now we can also build it for Android. Nintendo's gonna whoop somebody's ass. No, they no they're not. No, they can't because well, I know the... they can't. They're just gonna look over and be like, "The fuck?" You can't. Yeah, but they can't because this was this was completely decompiled. Um, clean room. They cannot. They cannot do it because they're not because in the source code they are not distributing the ROM file. Yeah. It's still so, gonna be weird. Like if I ever popped in a PlayStation Two and start playing Mario, I, I just feel weird. I'd be, you'd feel oh, yeah, like a, of right. I feel like a taboo. <laughs> Taboo. Well, yeah, but it, it's it's really it's really funny that now people are going to port Super Mario sixty four to all the platforms. So, um, with that being said, Super Mario All Stars got released for the Switch on Friday. A lot of people were very weird but excited because there was a lot of a uh, lot of technical questions, especially uh, because... for one game in particular, which we'll probably discuss. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so Super Mario 64 is based off of the the Shindo Taiyo version, which is the Shindo Pack Taiyo version, which is the Rumble Pack supported version from 1997, which means no BLJs, bacon lettuce jam, no backwards long jump. Hurts. That was patched out. Yes, I know it hurts a lot because you can't do the woo -hoo, yeah. woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. You can't do that shit. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. it is possible to still break the game because if you know how to do certain tech jumps, you can actually still do yes. the skip. But who's going to be yes. insane to actually learn all that? <laughs> well, right? people will. Well, people will. So, I guess they did. I guess they did that because they wanted the bug fi bugs fix, and also they they actually uh, got the Rumble Pack working to work with the Switch. Even on even on the uh, SN30 Pro Plus controller, the Rumble works. So that's cool. So they have an N64 emulator now. Cool. Um, first, and then, and then, and then um, for Sunshine, they uh, now all these games reported by Nerd Nintendo Europe Research Nerd. Development. I love that name, by the way. Mm. Research development team. So they made the N64 emulator. They made a GameCube emulator and a GameCube slash Wii emulator because they, because they're they uh, have some certain calls you can watch mvg's video on it for more details but they have a couple of calls system calls that were very interesting one was the bounding box which is not used by um sunshine but it's used by the paper mario games such as thousand year door and super paper mario so that might 
being tailed for something maybe happening in the future. And then the other one is Z plane uh, Z freeze, which is the Z frame buffering the on on the on the Z axis for the for games such as Mario Super Striker. So, um, so as far as I know, the um, the assets for these games, like the text boxes and stuff, they're actually patched in using Lua scripts in real time. That's why the text boxes look very clean and upscaled because they basically hijack the, the system calls for the text boxes, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, for the GameCube version, so let's see. So Mario Sunshine, the, and also with these games, they still run at uh, 30 FPS except for Galaxy. I think Galaxy runs at 60. Um, Correct. So for, for yeah, so for Mario sixty four, it's a it's a three it's a three x scale to seven twenty p, but the textures are higher res to seven twenty p. For um, for Sunshine, it's widescreen, and I think it's ten. I think it's rendered at ten eighty on the on the docked and seven twenty p on the the um, handheld, and then because those are those are emulated. Now, Galaxy's interesting because half of it's emulated and half of it is native code. Which is insane I believe, to think about, actually. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure of what it is, but I think maybe the logic is emulated, but the graphics are native code. Because, they, because it has to do with uh, translating the code from um, the power PC code to ARM code. And thank you, High Prop, for the cheer. Yeah, thank you for the bitty bits. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank you for the bitty bits. Hey, there he is. So that so it it, it begs the question now. Porque. Will this open the door? Will this open the door to the Zelda collection next year? And I think the answer to that is yes. Especially given the fact that the three D collection is only going to be lasting until the thirty first of March. Yep. On my and that's birthday. The, and. Year. And that's the end of the fiscal year. Exactly. So, what better way to start off the next it's fiscal because, year than uh, with Zelda's thirty fifth? You know, which is funny because Ocarina. That means that means Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask will have not only three DS releases; they'll have Switch releases too. Yeah, but I wonder. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but it, it begs the question though. I think what they're going to do is they're going to have the original versions. They're not going to have. Yeah, the they're not going to port the three DS versions onto the Switch. No, unfortunately, because because it's going to be a po it's going to be impossible because you need because that was designed for two screens in mind. Um, yeah. So it's it's going to be it's going to be impossible to do that. I just hope, I just really I'm I'm weirdly the negative one, but I really hope it doesn't become a practice of people though. Uh well I mean oh, I just don't like the I just don't like the we're not gonna make games we're just gonna regurgitate games and you just buy them. For to be fair, it's been thirty five years for Zelda though, so I mean they, sure, they but, it's not like as if they're celebrating their fifth anniversary and then they're gonna sure, but, but you but you know how game companies yeah. oh that worked for them let's fucking do it too you know, let's, let's be just... fair Tyrone come on let's be fair here well, for a and second. also and also to be fair at least this collection came with all three soundtracks we get we get yeah. the full soundtracks of yeah. all yeah. games so that's an added bonus. That I is mean, nice. if you were to buy, the yeah, because if you wanted to buy the CDs, damned, but that is nice. Yeah, plus that, plus actually, to be honest, you know, the way that the game load, the each game loads, it loads quick. So the cart loads quick, the games load quick. I mean, quick yes, it's quick. bare. I mean, I mean, yeah, Koopa the quick. <laughs> um, but realistically, I mean, it was a, it was a, it was greatly executed. Even though it's like only a four and a half gig game, you know, total. I think I think they did it an okay job for what what they had. I mean, Backstreet Boys aside, I think I think a collection like this is fine. Um, just to have just to have something nice and, and imagine let's 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 just take it back. So imagine if we get the same treatment, even if we get the same treatment for Zelda, right? We could get the soundtrack to Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, um, Twilight Princess, you know. Skyward Sword. That depends on how many they intend to port. In my opinion, I think what would be a good definitive port, if they were to do this, I'm not saying they might, but it is much easier for them to do it because they technically already ported two of them already onto the uh, Wii U. Let's get a Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and the never-released Skyward Sword HD remasterings. 
God. Those would be perfect trilogy games to port to the Switch, in my humble opinion. Because, first of all, Wind Waker HD still looks beautiful because of the cell shaded design. I mean, if you played it on the, the Wii U, that shit looks phenomenal, man. But the biggest, the biggest problem about doing that, first of all, is they would have to reprogram the whole game because you have to remember that they are programmed for two screens in mind. No, no, no. But remember, also, don't forget these were GameCube games, so they could just re go yeah, from could, there. Could, <laughs> so what they could probably do is maybe take the assets from the HD version and then just put it into the GameCube. Yeah, and just control. give them that. Like do like what they did with the sunshine gimmick, made it widescreen and all that. You know, not necessarily yeah. mm -hmm. yep. uh, straight out overhaul, yeah. but just tweak it enough to where it looks current enough for this era. Yeah, yeah, I, I would think so, but in, in a in a in a three D Zelda collection, I mean hell, I mean to be honest, we can also theoretically get the the Master Quest version of Ocarina of Time that was on the GameCube. True. Theoretically that's possible. That is possible. They could do that. If they did that, that would be really good. Because that was because very limited. Be... I think it was only the uh yes. promotion, if I'm correct. Yes, that's right. So they could take that, they could take Majora's Mask, they could take well, I, I, I honestly I honestly don't know about freaking Wind Waker. I mean they could do it, but maybe they'll do it maybe they'll do it as later part of the year, but not part of the, the like the cheaper collection. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think that's gonna be possible. I would think the GameCube versions of the Zelda three D games, um, of the N sixty four ports. Uh so that's so you're positive. thinking it's gonna be Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and Twilight, Twilight Princess. Prince. Twilight Princess. We're just yeah. going to skip one. Yeah, you know what? If they do like a Wind Waker and Skyward Sword, they kind of have a similar design in a way because of the yeah. way it's shaded and whatnot. I think that would make more sense. I mean, I mean, Skyward Sword Skyward Sword makes better sense because that was never re-released after the Wii. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I was saying. I would, that's what I was saying. I would think it would make the most sense for them to do uh, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess because those two already got HD releases. So just now carry them over into the Switch. And then, of course, do right. the release of Skyward Sword, a game that's been on the Wii that never came out in other rem remasterings, and just have it be uh, an exclusive for oh, the Switch. That is definitely, that's definitely a candidate. Yeah, so... Yeah. We don't know. It, it's still a little early to tell. Obviously, we'll probably learn more about it in the, in the coming months, especially because it's going to be Zelda's 35th. I know it's also going to be Metroid's, but what the hell is a Metroid nowadays, right? So... Oh. Fuck is a metro. So yeah, that's unfortunate yeah, to say, sadly. Nowadays, if they did it, they literally have to do the prime collection. Well, to be to to be fair, John Game ninety four here, they already did that with Galaxy. Galaxy, they already they already mapped the controls properly, so and they nobody, can do that. And nobody wants to fucking see other M. So <laughs> that's why they're only gonna. You know what? If they yeah. if they do, so we out of here. But, I also want to. I also want to mention. You know, today. Uh, you know, today I actually went and completed. Well, not one hundred percented, but at least I finished "quote unquote" sixty four Mario sixty four for the first nice. time ever. Because "quote unquote" you beat it. I saw. Yeah, yeah because uh, and I told my brother I was doing a fucking podcast tonight, and he still fucking tries to call me. Yeah. Piece of garbage. Um, but anyway, so we're getting back to the real important stuff besides my life. Um, I've had the, I've had the real N64 cartridge. I've, I've known about Mario 64 since day one. Okay. Um, I've had the cart since like 99 or 2000, but I have, I've only played a few levels. I haven't played the game to intentionally beat the game until this weekend. Cause now with this, um, with this right now, 64, I knew it was a masterpiece game. It was not. A, it was not a question of is it a bad game. It was just that I never had the real motivation to do it until this weekend. And even though, yeah, I had to look up some of the freaking how to do some of the jumps and how to do some of the stars. I did enjoy it. Um, it's a perfect combination of uh, a, a exercise and frustration, but having fun at the same time and motivated, which really doesn't sound that appealing and honestly doesn't make any sense but for me it just motivated me to keep on going and especially the last uh, bowser fight i think i only had to do it three times which actually is not too bad um but definitely enjoyed the game um i'm actually still want to play i still want to 120 it 
uh, 100% it mm-hmm. at some point. But that's that's going to wait until after I complete the rest of the games in collection because literally I have never played Sunshine because I never had the GameCube back in the day. And I never played Galaxy because I never owned Galaxy. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. I can see why people say that this, that at least Mario 64 is one of the most influential games of all time. And um, even though the camera controls, they, they are a little bit weird because you're not using C buttons anymore. And considering that um, on my controller on the SN30 Pro Plus, the, um, the, the ZL and ZR are actually analog triggers. That's why I couldn't get the freaking long jumps to work right um, sometimes, but I got used to it. Um, well worth it. I just wanted to buy it because I wanted to buy it be- before the fucking scalpers got to it. But honestly, I hi- I really enjoyed myself. And that means I'm going to be playing the PC port more. Uh, because, well, unfortunately, the the scene the scene of, of programmers did a better job in porting Mario 64 than, than Nintendo themselves. Which is sad, what? yet fascinating at yeah. the same time. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, because here's the thing: Mario 64 on the collection still runs at 30 FPS. The, the decompiled one from SM30, SM64, and X Builder, you can run it at 60 FPS in 4K. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so realistically, yeah, but real, yeah, but I, I will say that I honestly enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, it's like, why didn't I do this 20 years ago? But here we are. Anyone else got anything to say regarding the 3D collection in particular? Because to me personally, yeah, it's a good collection. I hate the Not controls really. for Sunshine though. God damn. I was gonna well, I was gonna say my thing is it's great to have as a as a, I got all three of the iconic 3D Mario games bundled into one with soundtrack. Especially if you have the physical copy, because you know, physical copy. It's just it's good to have a Especially because you know they're gonna be gone after a while. Yeah, so yeah, so it's a yeah, nice yeah. It's, a, it's a nice stamp in the timeline. I've only played 64 right now, but from what I hear from UKG and from what I played on 64 and Sunshine at least, um controls controls are uh, a little wonky, a little weird. Um analog stick most noticeably because this is a 3D Mario game. Um Analog stick really shows how Nintendo 64 somehow, as weird of a controller as they have, had a very had a very tight control analog wise. Whereas you if you move the analog stick, Mario moves along with it. Whereas the here, and I'm just using the Joy-Con switch pad control. So the thing that basically turns your Joy-Cons into a controller, Joypad, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I'm using those analog sticks, and maybe I need to use a different uh, controller or whatever, but goddamn, these analog controls are super sensitive. If you so much as as dart your thumb to the left, or think about the left, Mario will co- will careen to the left. Like, mm. every movement you make, trying to put him, uh, trying to, to directionalize Mario in the cannon is a pain. Yeah. That's because that's because um, the N sixty four had less of a dead zone than modern controllers, which is weird. You would think with advance with more modern technology they would have it nailed, but no, the sixty four no. controller, ugly as it fucking uh, looks, <laughs> works because it because it because the analog the analog stick on the N sixty four has less uh, resolution. Well, they have less I, resolution I mean, I, in terms of control. This is a weird situation where less is more because. I well maybe I'm maybe I'm just basing us off dumb nostalgia, but when I was also kid, lag. Yeah, when I was a kid and I used the uh, used the analog stick to control Mario in the in the sixty four, it felt more natural. Where he is here, I like it feels like every sudden movement I make is gonna get Mario either killed or veered off in a different direction that I didn't want him to go. Now it's not bad to the point where it's game breaking. It's passable. Nintendo. Usually does a good, especially with Mario, does a good job of making sure that everything passes in terms of movement or control. Mario still has weight to him. He's just a little slippery in certain situations. I noticed this a lot when I was running on top of like balance beams or bridges or something where it felt like I was I was I was super tense. 
because I knew that any direction that wasn't forward was going to be my death. So it's just, I don't know. It, it's great to have for a collection. I'm not downing the game. Don't get me wrong. It's a great collection to have. It's a great novelty item, especially if you're a Mario fan. This is perfect. But but it, but it, it's got its um it, it's got its sores it's got its scars they it definitely does again maybe it's me maybe I need to get a different type of controller mm-hmm. that probably is better uh, is better sensitive and I know that sunshine thing that KG talked about and a lot of people talked about I'm sorry I, maybe I'm just picky but if I were like head of game design and I figured out that you can't do the controls the same as you did in the GameCube. To me, that would be un that'd be unacceptable. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't sell Sunshine like that. It's impossible though, mm-hmm. because the GameCube game in particular for Sunshine, uh, it has this thing with the L and R triggers, you know, the 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 sensitive motions on that thing. Yeah, but yeah. I, I heard that Mario's like Mario can't do some stuff that he can't so weirdly oh, there's like a game flood. Yeah, there's I was gonna say about Flood's controls. Thank you, Polly. There's weirdly that that weirdly means that the GameCube version of Mario Sunshine, Mario has more options with Flood than he does with the Switch version. To me, as a designer, that's unacceptable. Yeah, but the problem is the, the problem is the common controllers that come with the Oh, I'm the aware. Switch. I'm aware. I'm just saying if you're so hell bent on re-releasing the game, then you gotta give us at least that option. Mm, yeah, but that would at least again, for the back, now the backwards long jump thing because it's kind of weird. It almost it's almost like each generation took away something when it when it came to the switch. Like it had to sacrifice something to get on the switch. Yeah, but to be fair, to be fair, that that was a, that was the same generational. That was a year later. Yeah, like sixty four had to sacrifice the backwards long jump. Sunshine had to sacrifice floods control. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but the whole thing is the backwards long jump is a bug, not a feature. The one for the right, flood. Right, right. That's why. That's why I let that one pass. That's why. That's why I at least said at least with the backwards long jump. But here, your 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 control with flood is limited on the switch version, and this is supposed to be the the generation that came after. Like to me, that just seems jarring. Now, yeah. for, for now, now I'm gonna be honest. I've never beaten Sunshine, and I didn't play a lot of Sunshine. I'm sure Polly mm-hmm. and KG. I was gonna say I'm sure Polly and KG. They're big Sunshine fans. Yeah. I'm sure they're affected by this the most. I'm just saying, as a developer, this feels like a weird scratch in an otherwise really good, really good collection. Yeah, I'm I'm worried. Yeah, I haven't played I'm, Sunshine in a long time. I think it's bad, and I'm not being negative. I'm just saying that that weird control hiccup is going to hurt it. Yeah. Because yeah, that means you literally have you have an incentive to get the GameCube version now because if you want to control Flood to its fullest, yeah, you got to have that version. I'm wondering how I'm going to be playing 64 because I didn't, I didn't have a Nintendo 64, so I never played mm. uh, Super Mario. Oh, also, let's give it up for Saul. She's got 118 stars. She's uh, going to get her final star soon. Is she oh, streaming nice. right now? Yeah, she's been she's been streaming for hours. Damn, she really only aiming for that big score. Yeah, she's trying to one hundred percent sixty four. That's why. Nah, I'm mm-hmm. I'm only going for that seventy star, and that's it. I'm done. <laughs> I already completed sixty four before. Yeah. I don't need to complete it again. It's not like I'm going to you get beat that. it in like three hours. Yeah, less than three hours, I'd say. Yeah, it was like two hours and forty five minutes. Yeah, fun game to speed run. I'll say that. Many people should try yeah, yeah. it out. Honestly, you guys should try out speedrunning Super Mario 64. While it is a very glitchy mess, it is still a very fun game. I think fans will grow. I would, I would game. actually, I would actually rather do the speedrun for the PC port because I oh can, yeah, because they, I can do my back long left. jumps there anyway. So that's well, it's not only that. Um, I can actually do it. Actually, do have have a USB plugged in. And controls, and actually have a, a game engine that will be fast. Yeah, unfortunately, right. if I try streaming that game, I'm gonna get my ass whooped by Twitch and Nintendo, so I can't exactly do that one. I would love to show it off, but sadly, I don't well, think you can. let's see. Well, we'll find out. I mean, we could just, I, could, I guess, I could just go and look on VODs and shit, but we'll see. Yeah, even some big. I know on you on YouTube. I know on YouTube. Uh, I know uh, my life in gaming did that, and they didn't get hit with it. It's a, it's a very oh. touchy particular game because it's one of those, you know, you don't know where to categorize that kind of thing. <laughs> uh-huh. It's a ma I mean it's a it's a re it's a it's a reimagining but again it's it's not like it's not like AMR2 AM2R. Mm-hmm. 
because it's like yeah uh because because from a from a technical standpoint they are K- they are protected kg you unlock yeah. mario galaxy 2 if you beat every game 100 percent lol ah oh, shit well i guess i got 100 percent 64 oh, oh. And that would mean well, actually to- actually that's a actually you know i had a theory about that um wouldn't it be nice if DLC? they if they had DLC for it after the period was done? Oh, like that'd be kind of cool. First, I mean, that would piss a lot of people off who didn't buy the game during its time period. Oh, that's their but, own you know. fault then. Yeah, that's yeah. why I say, well, yeah, not my problem. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be a better fan. Exactly. You had your chance. You had one opportunity to make a change. You didn't do that shit, boy. So. That's your own. Yeah, you're going to go eight mile on your ass now. Exactly. Now, it ends on your birthday, and then two days after is mine. I know, right? Except and my I, birthday I is going to be... Nah, we're just taking Mario away from you. <laughs> he, anybody remember that one SpongeBob episode where uh, Mr. Krabs grabs the remote and he just rewinds the fish's head from watching that film? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what Nintendo's gonna do to us after March 31st. They're just gonna grab control yeah, in our heads and just rewind crazy. all that shit. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, before we uh, obviously, given that we're already past uh, hour one, uh, I know if you guys have anything else in particular that you would like to discuss, you know, gaming wise, that maybe we might have skipped or passed by. Now would be the perfect opportunity to talk a little bit about it because I know we're gonna have a a meefy sort of discussion in a bit, not for the episode, yeah. mm-hmm. but for something that came out soon after. So, well, we're gonna yeah, I would say that we're gonna briefly do the episode. And then yeah, we're but I just want to make sure if everybody here got new. their gaming chit chat stuff away. So, uh, did everybody here get a chance to say what they wanted to say so far, or or should we continue? Oh yeah, I know you're getting the game. Soon. I I don't have much to say, obviously, but uh, I'm I'm only really familiar with Nintendo stuff, but um. No, I'm just. Yeah, I'm really excited. My, excited. my be too long, so. yeah, my game is coming. I think either to, hopefully tomorrow or sometime this week. So I'm really, really excited to play 64 and Galaxy, especially because I've never played them before. Galaxy is one of my bro- my brother's Galaxy. favorite games of all time, but I don't know. I think I was just a busy point in my life where I never really got to sit down and play it. Um, so, and then Sunshine is my second favorite game of all time. So. I could play. I I told Tyrone the other day. I I I I can't remember how many times I've I've played it and beaten it. That's how much I love it. Yeah. Talk to the fuck, yeah, now, talk to the fuck. somebody in the chat was mentioning about the Nintendo Direct Mini. Of course, we obviously skipped through that. But to be fair, though, um, the Nintendo Direct Mini, aside from one of the biggest announcements, that being of two Monster Hunter games that are coming out, honestly didn't have that many big of uh impactful games i mean there are some that are noticeable like this guy 6 confirmed to be a nintendo switch exclusive uh this guy 5 complete also confirmed to be available uh to download for free to try it out if you like to it's honestly a fun game if you haven't had a chance to try out that game it's absolutely something i think you guys would enjoy it's a nice cute little sprite game uh let me see what else is there. They also had uh, what was that one? That five Rune Rune Factory Five. That that game visual wise looks phenomenal. I can't wait to try that game out. And then of course Ori's sequel, The Will of the Wisps, is confirmed yeah. to have come out on the day of the direct, which was great. Uh, then after that they had a Monster Hunter direct that dives more into the Monster Hunter game sequel as well as Monster Hunter Stories Two. I'm very much looking forward more into stories too, only because I think uh, I'm a I'm a bigger fan of the RPG side of things, and mixing that with Monster Hunter, I, I think is they fun. made a Monster Hunter Story One. Well, you gotta beat it so you can get a good context for the story that's gonna happen in two. I didn't even notice they made a one. It's on the 3DS. Like they, again, I still didn't notice. But they made it on the 3DS. Now it'd be the perfect have, opportunity for ever- to buy it, Tyrone. In, fact, that well uh, in case people weren't aware, I believe Monster Hunter had a sale for all their games. I think like Monster Hunter Three Generations, whatever it was, it was actually like nine ninety nine at some point. <laughs> so yeah, all right. But uh, mm. Richie, I believe you also had something else that you would like to say. So I will pass that on to you. Uh, I mean, we're already at the end of it. No, it's, we still uh, got time. We know, we know we always timing, extend until like what? Say hours? it. Yeah. No, I mean because. I mean, I don't know. It was going to continue on with the PlayStation stuff. No, like, that's um, why you said. So if you had anything else you'd like to take away, it, this would be the I actually, well, 
I actually am a little more interested in the stuff that was revealed after the episode, as a matter of fact. So let's try to get to that if we can. Okay. All right, buddy, if you say so. All right, then. So let me go and uh, take this chance right now to switch over to the other side. Ladies and gents, let us now get into our review for this week's episode of PM 2019. Honestly, I don't remember the title of the episode, but... I do remember it being a fossil-focused episode. And this episode, of course, being focused on fossils, also will give us a little bit of a relook into Pewter City. Yeah, Ash and the gang decide to head out to Pewter City. And by gang, I mean Ash, Go, and Koharu. Koharu finally shows up in this episode, which is, I'm going to say right now, this is how she needs to be handled in the story. Bro, I she's not the main focus, but she still gets the development that I think she deserves in the sidelines. And it's just enough to where you really say, yeah, I think that was a good episode overall for her character. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it's kind of weird to say this, but this episode, I liked it. But genuinely speaking, aside from like a couple of comedy bits and everything, there's not much I could really break down apart from maybe the very end of the episode with Go's development. But uh, I'll pass this on to you guys and uh to hear your opinions as to what you think of the episode overall so uh, who wants to go first i'll go first all righty buddy what do you think about the episode it's it's a perfectly passable episode i did like the fact that okay they got a they, okay they see the um they see, oh, look at what, look at what we're doing, look like, like, fo like ro the fossil romance thing at the beginning. It's like, okay, let's go to the museum, like, let's go to the observatory. You know, we'll, we'll go to, we'll go to Pewter, right? So it's like, and then um, Sakuragi tells Kohadu, right? Like, okay, this is a, this is a, uh, a free research project. Okay, um, how about doing it on fossils? And it's like okay, and then then freaking Satoshi and Go just drag her out of the fucking play, uh, drag her out of the laboratory, which is funny because they actually used that animation twice. That's just so funny. Um, so the whole thing was the um, was it the ter yeah? What you see on the screen there, the the um, pterodactyl, the no, the pterosaurus uh, there. Oh, that thing, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it's like, but it's like, it's in a tent, and it's one of those things where once they got there, it was like, oh, the line has ended. Okay, it's who, like, no who here has? It, it, this also includes the call here, but as well as chat. Who here has experienced that? Where you see something cool, Me. and you're like, oh, bro, I want to go see it. You get there, nah, lines full. Yeah, yes. any, any anime convention, basically. Yeah, I I know. Like the one I could think of first regarding this was uh. When you Children, missed yeah. out on watching the film, what was it uh, the? Oh yeah, uh, there was it was uh weather yeah, with, with you. Yeah. Oh yeah. You missed out on watching that. that, but I got a chance to see it. Now. By like yeah well, yeah by like uh, by like a few hundred people, a couple like maybe maybe fifty. Bro, people. the the experience on that is horrible. I already explained it in like our past discussion for that, but man, yeah, that, that was a. Oof. I mean, I mean, I already watched it in Japan, so I wasn't that I mm -hmm. wasn't feeling that bad. But it's like, yeah. This is why anime MRC is my least favorite convention. <laughs> anime uh, is too crowded for me. Well, yeah. the first year was fine. Second year was... Uh, Second year was third. actually pretty okay. I think they started to improve upon one of my personal favorites, The Artist Alley. The third year, on the other hand, thought it was a smart idea to merge everything together in one floor. Yeah. Well, the other, well, the other problem was that was uh, that was when the freaking um, the snowstorm happened where people were stuck on the fucking Cross Bronx Expressway for 13 hours. Yeah. Poor Daniel. <laughs> Oh yeah, he yeah. got stuck anyway, by that, didn't so, he? <laughs> yeah, he got he got fucked over by the airport. See there, see there's the th see there's the end of the line thing. It's closed. Yeah. So oh. what? So what ends up happening is South Street and Go decide. Okay, then then they see a, a random um, museum worker saying, "Oh, you can help us out through the expedition." And interestingly enough, I could tell that was Megumi Hayashibara, even though she does Musashi in this episode, because the rockets are in it. I already knew that it was her voice. It's like you could hear the twang in her voice that 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 MP, that random character was making me. Mm -hmm. 
because you, you, could, you could already tell. It's like, it's like it's like it's like gift. It, it's like it's same thing with Yuji Ue though. You can it's a like gift wrapping a hammer. You hear it, you know it's her, you know, mm. and you know it's him, you know. So they end up they end up start doing the ex expedition stuff, um, which I really liked. I like I like that you know had the uh, Golurk come out and. And the the Golurk one was kind of funny because it's like, oh, he's gonna, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna crash, he's gonna smash this big ass boulder. No, it's a fucking also, tiny rock. Also, I want to take this opportunity to talk <laughs> about that real quick before I forget. <laughs> I just want you guys to like see the animation or see the art of when that giant rock was there. It it was drawn to where it didn't look like it was just drawn for the background. It looks like it was drawn to as if it was gonna be animated to move yeah. out of the way, but. Golurk just sat down and he grabbed the like tiniest little ass pebble for him and just like, all right, there, there you go. He just snaps that shit in half. I think Golurk was handled beautifully in this episode. If you're a Golurk yeah. fan, this episode I think was. Beautiful. I am a Golurk fan. I was so happy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now, so the the fossil guy is actually the curator or the director of the of the museum. Uh, excuse which me, is quite he's fun. the president. No, 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 president. No, president is Shacho. Ka um, Kancho is director. Oh, so curator. he's the Kancho. That's what you're saying. Yeah, because Shacho, it's it's, yep, it's uh, like Shacho, it. Shacho, it's uh, Shacho Bucho Kacho. That's that's the that's the name. But Kacho is the is the um, manager. But this is Kancho, which is director slash curator. I, I love that they're also pulling off a Nurse Joy Officer Jenny shit with them, though. I don't know why, but I find that amazing. Paddle yeah. Club, Don George. Yeah, they, they're, they're yeah. pulling off that. And I'm like, okay, if you want to go that route, sure. I, I don't mind. I find it hilarious, actually, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, so, but I did really like the way that Kohari was actually, uh, you know, very interested in, in, you know, in doing the fossil stuff. You know, you could see, you could see the... Uh, the kind of interest in her face, and I really like that. I really like the in, the interactions with Satoshi and all that stuff. Also, Satoshi picking up that fucking giant air, the, the giant rock, which probably weighs about fucking forty five pounds, just fucking tossing it in the air. <laughs> that's a true ten year old. Fuck, that's not as strong as That's yeah. like that, that. I know that shit can weigh like forty five or fifty pounds. It's like how the fuck you can do it. AG Ash still got him beat. With the he got that six yeah. pack hiding yeah, behind his shirt, did. man. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. Um, but but seriously though, the 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 whole thing with um, and then you see the rockets, which we'll get to them in a few. Rocket um, So so it's like so. Go finds what he thinks is a fossil, but it's actually like a what is it? The it, what what should what is the pterodactyl uh, fossil? Thing? Old amber. Yeah, old amber. Amber. Yeah. Old yeah, amber, amber, right? Yeah. But yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Finds it because because basically what's funny is they're they're because basically it's go, um, Sobble, reboot and go Lurks just like bashing on the same fucking rock for like hours because you see the time just go by, which is just <laughs> stupid. But it's it's quite it's quite funny. But then but then why right when they're 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 going away, he spots the old amber and then like oh I found something and then they bring it back to lab and it's like okay. Uh, we're going to, okay, we can revive this, we can revive this, but it's going to take overnight, so they stay at the Pokemon Center. Mm -hmm. So, then the Rockets had an idea, it's like, okay, we're going to steal this. So, they, they, oh, yeah, fucking, they, 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 fucking, they fucking take the machine, and they pull it to full fucking blast, explosions happen, and they're, they're fucking blown away. Um, they, they, they run the fuck out of there, and then it's like, the fucking pterodactyl just, like, breaks out so obviously they get out of bed and they run to the, they run back to the museum and it's like okay now we got to deal with this and then we have to deal with the freaking rockets and the fucking gosha shit mm. you know it's like yeah um but it, it was a weird choice it was like what was it nidorino and a go and no mm. not golem a graveler and a graveler that's random. Also, like, the way they get I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, here's the thing. Yes, those two lines are found in pewter. That's fine. I, 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 hundred percent understand that. But that's just suck. That's just fucking random. No, like I was saying, and you know, ads, it was random. The way ads. they got blasted off in this episode was so weird. 
Oh, but but what but what really made it though was the fact that um Kohada was telling um Go like, hey, Sadashi needs our help. You know, the rockets are freaking attacking him, and he's like, he's focused on the pterodactyl, which is good. I mean, I like that. I like that he was he was on his own and he wanted to. He really was uh, intending on fighting it, mm. and then you know, Sadashi just fucking steamrolls the rockets. So it's like, yeah, that was, that was, that was really funny though. I mean, I did like, I did like the character development in that specific point because you had them two separated and I thought it was a great, I thought, I thought, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I mean the rocket part is just film and well, as always, mm -hmm. as team, always but. one of team. Well, <laughs> not the one of team rockets worst appearances, but it is a bad team rocket appearance. Yeah. Like, God damn. They're there to, because they're there. I love how Ash's biggest accomplishment is something he's done literally every episode. <laughs> yeah, and how how funny is <laughs> it that the electro web like wasn't about kill it. Him. That yeah, was that cool. Was... I did like that though. I, I like mm -hmm. to beat uh Golem and Need Arena. Gra Graveler, using... Graveler, Graveler. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I associate Golem with the rolling thing. Uh but I, I, I do like that Pikachu beat Need Arena and Graveler with using technically he used an electric move, but he didn't use an electric move. Because I, I know he used Thunderbolt earlier before they cut the ghost battle. I'm like, what the f are you doing? This is the third time in the show you forgot. But uh, I let it slide. Well, that was, Need Arena that was the main Need Arena was not ground at this point. Need Arena? Oh, uh, well, I thought it I well, no, I think he is just poison until he it's until Nido King, I think. King. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nido King, Nido King, he, the, 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 yeah, he gets the ground type. He, he gets the ground type at that point. So, so the, so the, yeah, so the Thunderbolt does work. Yeah, but the, come on, Graveler's there. Like at that point, just don't, <laughs> just don't use Iron Tail the whole time. Yeah, again. That's yeah, that's I mean, it wasn't the main fight, so I didn't, I, I didn't lose sleep over it. But like, I know, um, and I guess does anybody else want to speak before I get into my thoughts? Yeah. Uh, want? Oh. Go ahead, Polly. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Do because, you want yeah. to give your thoughts first? Go. So, Go. Okay. Fine. Go. Um, can you can you guys hear me? Because I took my contacts out, so now I'm just, just what the fuck? What an, what an old lady said. Yeah. Can you guys and hear I'm me? Just, I'm just can going you? to speak into the dark and. <laughs> you guys hear me? I, you Joey, know I can. Joey Richie will go next. Okay. You, you know I can't hear you without my glasses. Like. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> go go go. Uh, I have a lot to say. Um, I right. thought it was a solid right. episode. I pretty much echo the same things as Tia says, ironically enough. Um, yeah, I, it's like I was enjoying the episode until we got to the Team Rocket part. And the irony is, is that I actually enjoyed a lot of the dialogue. Um, Jesse was like, because that guy, the the what, the director, he was like, oh, fascinating, or it's it, it's amazing, it's it's so fascinating. And then she's like, well, if Mister Fascinating is finally be is uh, quiet, and I, I died at that line. Um, and then Ash goes over to the bush and he like he catches uh, the trio and James is just like sup. <laughs> now he's like greetings. Um, before they get into the fight, so I just thought those that dialogue was funny. I I thought um, genuinely when that happened, I was thinking like that SpongeBob was like, oh, uh, I could explain. <laughs> <Sorry>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, I like. It's just so frustrating. I just feel like the the Kohara stuff was great. The Go stuff was great. Um, it, it like it was a solid episode. I don't really have too much to really complain about or praise it for. Like I just the the Team Rocket stuff annoys me because I just feel like they are just an afterthought at this point. They're they're a way for when the writers are like, okay, we're gonna. We need go to catch this mon, but it's like we need we need some sort of plot, and like Team Rocket has to be that plot. The same way that uh, like it's like they're kind of I feel like they're kind of falling into the formula of like AG and and Johto, which is uh, fine. Where for it's me. like, huh? Which is fine for me technically, but a lot of people they're used to other things. We continue. Cool. 
Well, I I guess it's it's I really like the way that they were handled in Sun and Moon. Um, I thought it was refreshing. Even I I would go as far as to say that I like X Y too because they weren't in every episode. Yeah, they weren't used in every. And episode. I know they're not in every episode here either, but when they are used, they're very Team Rocket esque. Yeah. Um, back to formula. Yeah, it's just I guess it's like my complaint every week though. It's it's I just it, it depends on how invested you are in them as characters. Mm. But it's just even with the gotcha machine, it's like there's not as much like there's no reason for me to care about them much at this point. Like at least when they had their Pokemon, like I cared about which Pokemon they got and how they bonded with with that specific team. But I don't know. The you gotcha can't, machine doesn't you can't even care about these Pokemon because they're just random Pokemon that are pulled out of the. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing was that I I made this tweet today because I thought it was interesting. But one of my favorite Chronicles episodes is actually the um, one where Gary revives the Aerodactyl, and yeah. I got similar vibes from when um, Gary was trying to calm down the the Aerodactyl because it was going crazy over the island because it obviously didn't trust people um so i got similar vibes from how go was trying to calm it down and be gentle um so i i kind of posted i posted that side to side picture and mm. uh i got some good feedback from it so i didn't because a lot of people a lot of people haven't seen the chronicles or probably haven't seen that episode so i think it was kind of interesting it might have been an interesting thing to see and i don't think there was really any purposeful connection but i mm. i just um i just thought it was interesting that they did mm. this sort of researcher researchy episode and mm. um you know they have a golden opportunity for koharo to uh study under mr researcher oak but you know we'll mm. see what happens um and one last thing you know, I could, have, could have mentioned Brock. It's in Pewter City, but you know, I'll just continue to be bitter about this. All right, Richie. Uh, it's not huh? important. I'm ready, Richie. Go. <laughs> I mean, I, I was going to go to the drink if we're going to talk about Chronicles, but uh, it seems like I'm not. Hey. Um, I don't have too much to say, really. I mean, basically, the episode to me is like it was obviously nice to see Kohara more often with the group. Because mm. people are like, well, wait a minute. Where is she gonna be more involved? What is she gonna do? I think this episode was a nice was a nice display of, you know, the the, the dynamics between the three. And I'm glad that um, you know, Kohari is starting to warm up, um, it seems like, to Ash a little bit more often. And I mentioned this last night. If you watch the uh Tassel Fisher podcast, which if you don't, I mean, I don't know what you're missing, but Basically, uh, in that podcast, I mentioned that you normally you wouldn't like um, a person right away. You're not really sure of who they are, uh, personality wise, attitude wise. So maybe that's what Karara was doing with Ash all along, which is why she, which is why from from our perspective, she would always think think of him as like this oddball, this like weird person. It's because she doesn't really know what he really stands for and who he is. And I think this episode, like I mentioned. Um, last night that i thought the episode did a um a decent job a good job of like showing progression in that arc and mm -hmm. i believe that at some point or another um there will be a little bit more respect and i guess more of a i mean because i'm sure ash looks at i'm sure they both look at each other as friends but it takes a little bit while a little bit to warm up to the idea of an actual friendship before it's you know solidified um but besides that it was nice to see go actually you know once again capture another pokemon and and along with that actually you know fighting for it not just oh for the pokeball i did then there you go you capture it um it was nice to see him actually get challenged up a little bit just for that mm -hmm. um but other than that i mean those are the only two things i can really say i mean yeah the, the moment with team rock was kind of funny but other than that i thought this was a decent episode but if you're someone that's looking to see koharu uh progressed more into the into the group i think this episode was a decent um one for those interested in that and i'm looking forward to seeing uh her be more involved because i truly think that she needs to be more involved um whether it's main focus or 
um, just being there. I don't care. I just want her to be there and get like um, some sort of involvement one way or another. That's not just mm. um, a third tier or fourth tier. I want her to like sometimes have like a, a significant role or a mm. role where it's like, hey, I'm helping now. I'm doing this, but I'm not the main focus, you know? So overall, mm. I thought this was a decent episode. All right. Your mm. turn. I believe it's your turn, buddy. Um, for me, a couple of things. And uh, so a lot of people are saying, okay, cool, Koharu showed up. And it's it's bugging me that we're able to accept, like right now it feels like a lot of people are satisfied with the bare minimum when it comes to her. And that's kind of jarring to me. Like, I'm, I'm glad Koharu showed up. Yeah, she didn't do shit, but I'm glad she was here. Like, mm. like... Well. I mean, technically, uh, she did do something. I mean, I mean she did something. I, I'm bugged that Yamper didn't come with her because if they have to, if they have to absolutely have to bring Team Rocket as the conflict of this episode, which they weren't really. It was really Aerodactyl just going rogue, which they could have made an episode about that themselves. You want to know why they did Team Rocket? They had to separate Ash from Go because there's no fucking way they would have been like, they still don't trust Go enough to handle a situation himself. So the plot has to separate them for them so that Go can get some time to shine. Because there was no way, if it was just Aerodactyl versus Ash and Go, Ash would have whooped Aerodactyl's fucking ass. Like, it, it would have it been a complete mismatch. Right. They, so they had to separate him. So that's why Ash's big focus, for some reason, is doing something he does literally every episode. Fight Team Rocket. If Koharu had brought Yamper, then we could have had a moment where she fought Jesse and or James. Or help me out if you have to have a Pokemon battle. Then 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 Ash would have been like, just stay calm. Or, you know, we could have had Ash coaching Koharu on battling. Not mm. necessarily a big moment, but just be like, hey, you got this. Stay calm. Like, because this is her first real battle she has with Team Rocket. She's already been introduced to them thanks to the Hoenn episode. But this is her first battle against Team Rocket, but they don't do that. Instead, Koharu serves as a wow go. You got so strong since we last fucking like that's the the method she serves. She's she's meant to ogle at how at Go's progression, which from a narrative standpoint isn't that great. I never really cared for characters that are that that are used in in stories that go, oh, you're so strong. Like like that's not my cup of tea. I, I Koharu definitely seems like a character that's able to handle herself. Well, to the very least, in a Pokemon battle, she fought Gengar and she fought Firo, which means she definitely could have held her own against Team Rocket at least a little bit. Yeah, they're trained Pokemon. Well, these aren't trained Pokemon, but they're Pokemon being ordered around by people versus a wild Pokemon, right. which would have been a bigger mm. step up for her. And it would have been a lot more appealing to me than just Pikachu, we did it. Like, <laughs> well, I've seen you guys beat. Beating Team Rocket to Ash is fucking like breathing. It's just second nature at this point. It would have been good to see Koharu be being our first official Pokemon battle. But they sort of dropped that so she can ogle let Go for a second. Now, Go, he was fine. Just like in the Flygon episode, he had complete control. This season is really kicking in Go's like development. I think this mm -hmm. is Go's season. Yes. Yeah. Because the first season was check out how strong Ash is. This one's check out how strong Go's getting. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and then, I, and then Nick, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, good. Oh, and I also feel like uh, now nothing wrong with the Aerodactyl plot. I just find it really hilariously familiar, not to Gary's Chronicle episode, but to uh, another episode in Journeys. You know, Pokemon being born for the first time, breaking out of a window. It's nighttime. Trainer has to chase mm. after it. Uh, does this, this seem a little familiar to anybody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seems seems almost like the Riolu episode, kind of. <laughs> just mm, yeah, Aerodactyl. yeah, you're right, you're right. Just seems a little bit like the Riolu episode. Just replace Riolu with Aerodactyl. Um, cool to see Golurk you being used in a fight. Although it's kind of sad, Golurk gets the shit kicked out of it. But at the same time, I do like that he's not just all angry. my favorites do. I, I like that Golurk isn't invincible though. I, I like that he's not just like this this super powerhouse. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's bigger than the, the average Golurk, but that's it. That, that Literally, that's it. And it's fine to show that Golurk isn't really a fighter. He, like, this Golurk is not the fighting type. He'll defend himself like he did in the episode where he was caught, but he's not a fighter. He's not a fighting Pokemon. He, he's a 
Pokemon that's big in size alone, but he's like a gentle giant almost. Mm. So it's kind of cool to actually see Go use or utilize his other mons in certain ways. Uh, Go all around got the spotlight in this episode, and that, that's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for that. My one little thing is that thing I just said about Koharu, and I'm not saying it as in, oh, um, this episode made me mad because uh, Koharu could have done more. I'm just saying there was an opportunity y'all had to hear uh, Pokemon Journeys, and y'all kind of flubbed on it. Um, I'm thinking that the Koharu thing is going to happen after the Darkest Day plot. I know, but I'm that that's what I don't like. I don't like that every time something happens in Journeys, it's, oh, it's because you got to wait. Like, I'm tired of that excuse. Now. Well, the thing is, though, oh, well, here's, well, here's the thing. People complain about getting arcs, right? Well, you have to have an arc finish before you go to the next oh, no, thing. This is just a little thing. It's just her beating Team Rocket. Anybody can do that shit. Wild Pokemon of the day have done it. <laughs> I also yeah. feel like it's going to happen. My only issue, and I kind of agree with Tyrone, is that it always feels like the third character gets shafted. You know, Brock, Silen, uh, Clement. I guess, yeah, come on, in a way. Yeah, you know, and then way. for Sun and Moon, it's uh, Sophocles. No, go yet. Mm. After his race, what is it? Well, I mean, after, yeah, stop after, his, yeah. after his two races, his Charger Bug race and his Vicavolt race, I'm just like, what, what else you got, bro? Right. Quack, quack. Yeah, thank you for the voice of Vicavolt. <laughs> I think he fought Kiawe in the league and almost beat Dude, him. But, I'm you know. still mad that he didn't make it to top four. I, I'm saying that that shit still stings. I'm, I'm glad. That, I'm that's glad. why the league's a nine out of ten for me. Uh, that's why I'm glad Kiawe beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Hmm. Oh yeah, Kiawe like deserves to win that battle. I am yeah, defender of Sophocles. And, 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 and that doesn't, like I said, the Koharu thing doesn't hurt the episode in total. It's just one of the things I noticed while looking at it. I looked at it and went, y'all had a whole opportunity. The ball was alley-ooped and y'all did not take the shot. Alrighty, so I guess this is the perfect opportunity to sort of talk about this thing now, why don't oh, we? Boy. Unless everybody got their message across about what they thought about this episode? Well, to finish to finish off to finish off the episode, I did like I did like the way that it was cat that um, Aerodactyl was captured. I think I think it was really cool that you know Go had a bonding <laughs> moment with it, which means that we're gonna have a freaking serious battle coming up, and we know that because of certain things. Um, and I'll give it a seven out of ten. It was decent. yeah, I I give that score as well. I think that's it. It's like it's a good episode. Same. Not something I'm gonna jump back into, but I, uh, the moments that they had in there were still genuinely funny. Like the Golurk and the small ass pebble scene was honestly one that gave me a good chuckle. That was a good one, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, overall, decent episode. Also, also, um, Ichitsubute, where you see there uh, doing the whole thing. I'm going to do some research. I know that I know that what I know that what it said was it was a pun, and I have to figure it out, and then I'll probably have that answer for you next week. All right, thank you for that, buddy. Uh, so there's one. Go on, buddy. No, there's one last thing I thought of, but it's not really a big deal. It's just something that I actually. I know we rag on journeys a lot. Uh, and I know well, I don't. Uh, it's, it's, it's mostly no, Tyrone no, and Terrell I, doing it. No, I don't rag on journeys. No, I just no, point no. out things that are missed opportunities. Yes, okay. exactly. I'll say one thing that they're doing really well that I like. What's uh, that? And it's that I always felt like in OS. Actually, I felt like this in the in the series as a whole. Like probably starting like OS through Diamond and Pearl. Is that it's like they came out with all these like anime exclusive like dumb rando towns that we've never heard or seen of in the games, and I'm so glad that they're finally doing these actual game locations. Um, so mm -hmm. even though I was uh, you know yeah. obviously bitter that Brock wasn't mentioned, it's like every time we've been in Peter City, it's always usually had to do with Brock and or his family. So it was actually nice seeing like the actual museum that you go to in the games um and i i think journeys is really utilizing that well yeah i mean like even canto itself for as many times as it's referenced and shown and brought back hell even in ag it was brought back yeah they, they never really do those things that are in canto that are noticeable like they never go to um they never go to the mall in celadon city or they never go to um 
Well, they went to the safari zone once in Future City, but yeah. you know that episode. That episode like the the random times off. were to answer Jay Creighton, The random times were fun, but I just I didn't like that they were they almost took the place of the some of the real locations, you mm. know. Yeah. So yeah. Mm. All right, KG. Okay. All right, so let's talk about. Sure. Oh man, so. Let's start off with making a little bit of a statement here before we actually get into our discussion. At the end of the day, if you like what you're going to get, and that's perfectly fine, we still ourselves do not know the context nor how the story is going to be structured with what these upcoming episodes are going to be like. So take our uh, discussion here with a bit of a grain of salt because all of this that we're going to be discussing is basically... Things we know so far and things we're expecting to see in the distant future. So, you guys ready to begin then? Mm. All right. I guess Go we're gonna I guess we're gonna start with that one poster, yes. right? Let's kick things off with the poster here yeah. real quick. Oh, so I don't know why the background yeah. didn't load up fully. I, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, I I right. really I really liked okay, I don't know. I don't want to let it like the Yeah, that's why I said I don't know why it came out looking weird like mm -hmm. that, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I do like, uh, for, first of all, um, the text on the left, I really like what that says. That says, Saikyo Badi, Aratana Bokene, which means the best, the, the, the strongest buddies. Yeah, I guess, I guess they, I guess they're watching too many of these podcasts because freaking, you know, KG likes to say that <laughs> word. Um, hey, look, I've influenced that, that, the, says anime. the strongest buddies. <laughs> yeah, the strong, the strongest buddies to the two new adventures. And I love I love that tagline. Um, also, the freaking um, Numakuro or freaking um, Swampert. I love no, that. No, that's Marsh Comp, actually. So, Marsh so Tomp, here, sorry. here's here's where things are going to begin. You know what? Let I, I had the Japanese. Let, let's talk right. about the odd one out of this entire poster. That little blue motherfucker right there at the top right. That 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 <laughs> Marsh Comp. I'm telling you guys <laughs> right now, this is my prediction. That's Ash's final Pokemon right there. What? <laughs> uh -oh. Why? Tyron doesn't like I've been correct no, it's the, random. I've been correct with the Farfetch so far. So, as long as we don't get Grookey. It's, a me it's, the, meme, it's the meme Pokemon. And given oh. that Ash's team so Ooh. far currently Ooh. are containing Pokemon that are fan favorites... Who better to be a meme Pokemon for his team than that blue guy over there? Um, odd, especially considering that Brock had this already. So Ooh. did a lot of other characters with other Pokemon before in the past, but no one seems to bat an eye. But now that I bring this blue guy over here, suddenly... Not I'm any traveling well, companion Pokemon. Yes. There, there is a Marsh Top in the episode waiting on the line. Um, and I read that this is the first time Marsh Tomp has actually been featured since Brock's Marsh Tomp. Yes. It, that's yes. why it had such a significant moment in the opening, because we've never seen one in the series for and, a and, very and does, long and does, time. And it does, the, and it, and it does, the, and it does like the crazy random dance that it does in the 3D yeah. game. Now, yeah. somebody yeah. was that's asking funny. here, KG, what about Dracovish? Now, here's the thing about Dracovish. Close. I honestly think that could also be Ash's six slash seven Pokemon. If Ash is not going to get Marsh Tom, Dracovish, I think would make a good exception. You know why? Because Dracovish is such an Ash Pokemon. In this episode, actually, you could get a, a brief idea how Ash acts overall towards fossils. He just assumes that what he finds is immediately some form of a fossil. So, what better way? Would it be to have an episode where Ash actually succeeds in getting a fossil? He thinks the two make a complete set, and it's going to be a true organic-looking dinosaur monster fossil Pokemon. To then realize he created an abomination and loves the living shit out of it. That, that to me, I, I think is an Ash thing that he would totally do. He would be like, I've created this ultimate monster right here, and I freaking love it. Well, funny, well, funny enough, on the... Uh Tassel podcast for those of you that watched and remember me saying this i did say that based off the poster when we talked about this i said that um i said that dracovish would be my first choice for his six or seven slot if he were to go in a rotation team style but i also said but i also said that 
if that weren't to work out and we ended up with a uh, marsh stomp, hopefully I got that correct this time. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, however, if we went with marsh stomp instead, I also wouldn't really be upset. N and now, of course, you know, some people may disagree because of the typings and stuff, but the reason I gave it was because I want, I want a little more diversity in the team because obviously, you know, as I mentioned, we already have free cancel mods, you know, Pikachu, Dragonite, and Gengar, if I have that correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, we have a Goar Pokemon, you know, technically in Goar and Farfetch'd, and a Sinnoh Pokemon with uh, Riowu. So I think it would be, I think it would be a decent choice if the next one were to be from either Hoenn or Unova or another Goar. But I think um, if we were to go in that diversity fashion, I think Hoenn would be a pretty, pretty decent choice. And again, I understand that people dis may disagree because you know either the typing wouldn't work or the fashion of it or whatever. But I wouldn't be mad at all if it were either uh, Marsh Stomp or Dracovish. So I'm just like neutral about this as possible. <laughs> Not to avoid any arguments, but that's just my actual position. Yeah, I just fun. don't care which. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I just don't care. Like I think either one would be pretty, pretty now, good. Now, at the end of the day, as long as it ain't Grookey's bitch ass, I'm perfectly fine. Wow. So, Damn. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine with either me, Marsh Tom, or <laughs> disgusting looking Dracovish, as Tyrone calls it. So. <laughs> yeah. I hate Dragon Man. I actually, I actually want to hear Tyrone's uh, uh, response to all of this because he seems to be very adamant about uh, these two choices. So I actually want to hear it. Dragonfish uh, never liked Dragonfish to begin with. So like even when before it became the popular competitive use fish just ran on everything Pokemon, I just never really liked it. Design wise, it looks horrible. It's just it, it just, ugh, it's just a black Pokemon to me. I get it. That's the point. The point is that it's supposed to look ugly. All of them are supposed to look ugly because they're misplaced fossils. That's fine. I just don't like it. Like, it's just an ugly-ass Pokemon. Just like how KG feels about the uh, the Galarian starters' uh, second forms is how I feel about, all, well, yeah, all of the... Actually, no, I actually like Dragazult. That's, that one's kind of cool. But the rest of them, yeah, they're problems. Damn, Tyrone, you're but, shaming but, Pokemon out here. Why you do this? Wait, wait, what? KG literally insulted all three of the Galarian starters' second forms, but I'm I'm the evil yeah, one, right? Yeah, exactly. No, but see, everybody the, agrees the... with me. That's the thing. What? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> just also, kidding, just kidding. Also, and, well, I guess people would probably want to see what it looks like animated-wise, like how it works in battle, how it looks. Yeah, I want to see just how big it is compared to, uh, to Ash. <laughs> just be like a big I want to see what fish is. I want to see what Fisher's Rand does, but I'm, I'm really hoping that Ash doesn't get it. Give it to go. You know what I'm Make also expecting it. the most? I want to see what it what? does as a sound when it's breathing. Like, is it going to be like, oh. ooh, ooh, some shit like that, you know? <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> <but> water. <laughs> right, atmosphere. Right. right. Um, <laughs> As far as his other member, Marsh Stop would be weird just because I was so like, unfortunately the anime is associated with it with Brock to me now, so I Ooh. I can't imagine it with anybody else. It just looked weird. Like I've never seen Ash have a traveling companion's mind. So it, 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 he got a Lucario, buddy. Karina was one of the traveling a, companions. Ah, uh, don't do that. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. That she's a temporary. Uh, Iris companion. and Dragonite. Oh yeah, that's exactly. right. <laughs> he fucking got. See, you got Sun twice in the no, same. No, I way. barely, I barely associate Ash the Dragonite as his. <laughs> that's Did probably the problem. Ash getting them after the companion. Yeah, it, I barely associate Dragonite with him oh, because he barely uses it. Kiawe and Charizard, which was after, Ooh. but still counts, you know. Yeah. I mean, well, Charizard is a staple for Ash because I associate Charizard with Ash first, and then everybody else second. Oh, so whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because th that makes the most sense because anime wise, Ash had it. And the Cyndaquil thing, Ash had first. Ash had his Cyndaquil first. Uh, d d even the Dragonite he currently has, I'm like, that's his. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That is his. Cause he doesn't he doesn't treat it like his. <laughs> it's not really his, but it's almost like more of it's the 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 research labs Pokemon, not his. He's just borrowing. It. <laughs> 
That's what it feels know, like. Him and Gengar. That, that's how I feel too, because I feel like Ash only knows yeah. of two Pokemon, and that's called Pikachu and not Pikachu being yeah, Riolu. Pikachu and Re- yeah, Pikachu and Riolu. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, Gengar. I, why did he catch that again? I forgot. I, I, I like. I by the way, I like. I like the name of that clip. Uninterested icy lettuce. TB taco left. <laughs> like what? God, this Tuber- okay. So your taco, your taco has tuberculosis. Damn, your taco's over there to the left, sir. Damn. If you want to go get. It. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's cool. Like, it's cool if he gets either one. I guess I'll have to get used to it. If Ash evolves the Marsh Stop into Swampert, I think I can probably adjust to it better because I don't think we've had any main characters have a Swampert. Yeah, no, I've been wanting that for Brock. Yeah. He never got it, so I'm a little bummed. Yeah, out yeah, that, yeah, that'd be kind of cool if he got Swampert though. I, that, that, that'd be pretty interesting. I mean, I'm really curious about that opening too. Like. Yeah, Lucario. I mean, Lucario, Ludicolo, Ludicolo dancing with the Marsh. Yeah, because it's not even here. (laughs) I mean, I mean, I mean. To be fair, I mean, Ludicolo is like a freaking staple. Isn't that Brock's Pokemon too? Yes. Yes, but but the thing, but the thing is though, it's also it's also in the Mon Poke, like Mm. line of stuff. Mm. You know. yeah, I mean it's on an opening because it's one of the popular ones. That's why it's in the Mon Poke stuff and the Pokemon Island things that you see on YouTube on the official yeah. channel. So I mean it's a Pokemon that people recognize, and also of course Detective Pikachu. I mean, come yeah. on. And I guess the other thing I want to talk about the poster. Um, Eevee is here and looks like it's going to be Kawaru's. And I do love that they're uh, going with the gimmick that was introduced in Let's Go. We see that this is a female Eevee because its tail is yeah. heart shaped. That's yes. pretty cool. I like that. I like. I like. Did that. you notice Kohado has a lot of heart shaped Pokemon feature alongside her? Yeah, Yamper, yeah. the Dove. Yeah, and yeah. then now Eevee here. Now, okay, mm-hmm. so obviously there's a lot of other interesting things to talk about regarding this poster. Showing off a couple of things for the Kanto and Johto side for Zapdos, Suicune, and Mewtwo. Mewtwo with Mew as well mm. included. Can I com- can I comment on the Zapdos one real fast? Because I made a tweet that apparently blew All up. Alright, here's mine. Ah! Now you can go. So my tweet was my tweet was uh it was a picture of Zapdos because of the episode it's supposed to be debuting in. And then it was the picture of the Johto episode, uh all the uh, like crystals is clear or whatever. As crystal is clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the one with the Zapdos in it, where Team Rocket captures Zapdos. As clear and as it, crystal. Thank you. As clear as crystal. <laughs> I had it mixed up, but um, and then the Pokemon movie two thousand when uh when Lawrence the third ends up capturing Zapdos, and then when Halucha fucking high jump kicks Zapdos, and then I put it in in the quotes. I said, "Can we please leave Zapdos alone? <laughs> Can we please mm-hmm. stop?" Eating I, this I agree. Shit? Get this man the break. Can we, can, can we stop beating the shit out of this bird? <laughs> this poor bird that's trying to live its life. Mm, I agree. But yeah, Go's probably going to catch that, though. So that'll be nah, interesting. So shame is not the Galarian. It's a shame is not the Galarian. No, no, no. Whatever. I think that's a setup, obviously, for when they... Set up, yeah. Because they uh, show up the three birds in the opening, so you know those three birds are going to be significant to the plot. Honestly, it's kind of weird to say this, but like Zapdos, Articuno, and Moltres don't feel so legendary no more, in my opinion. Because they've been there since well, Generation 1. They kind of feel like well, standard mods now. Actually, yeah. John points this out in one of his videos he made recently. Where he's, uh, he talks about legendary Pokemon. But there's legendary Pokemon that obviously have multiples of themselves. Yeah. So there's multiple Zapdoses. There's a Zapdos in Kalos, Johto, Kanto. There's multiple yeah. Zapdoses. There's, going back to the Chronicles again. There is an episode where Richie is looking for Moltres. Um... Or he goes along with actually what people theorize is is, is uh, Ash's father, even though I don't really think so. No. Um, no, he's not. Yeah, I know he's not. But people, I don't know. He's in the running somehow. You know, she's still fire. Over. That's that's um, her for sixteen, yeah. And Butch and Cassidy also go along for the ride and try to steal the Moltres. So that was interesting, and obviously that was after Pokemon two thousand. Um. Yeah, yeah, but it's in, oh, if it's in, in Celebi too. If it's in Chronicles, I associate it with the same Moltres that lit the torch. Well, the thing is, yeah. though, that that episode aired in like September two thousand four. So 
way after it was during but, AJ era. But yeah, in the video, John points out his theory is that uh, there's multiple legendaries. So yeah, I believe that, and I also kind of believe KG. Where I think Zapdos have been multiplied. Zapdos, Moltres, and Arnakuna have been multiplied so much now. There's just multiple of them. Yeah, yeah. They're multiplying they're like bunches, bunches, man. Yeah, yeah. like every, like everybody's got a Zapdos now. Mm. <laughs> Now, of course, yeah. the other one that's sticking out like a goddamn sore thumb, Mewtwo. Oh uh, boy, Mewtwo. Hey, Mewtwo's been a while. Mm, that's I don't want to. I don't, don't want to talk about it. <laughs> what is my purpose? To be cloned a bajillion different times. That's why. Of people and Pokemon. Alike. All right, get in my <laughs> Pokeball, know. buddy. <laughs> no. no. Mewtwo. <laughs> As long as it ties in well to Go's development in the Mew plot, that's all I care about. Go's gonna try to punch Mewtwo and get sent all the way across the island. <laughs> He's gonna turn to stone. Yeah, the rain of no, Mewtwo. Just imagine, just imagine a, a plot twist. Mew morphs into Mewtwo. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> you know you know what? It's funny. Fuck with people. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because um, yet again on the Tasso stuff yesterday. We even predicted that, wait a minute, because Mew turned into Lugia in one episode, could it be Mew this time around? Mew too. Yeah, Mew too. Like Mew turning into Mew too, just to fuck with them. It could yeah. happen. Could. Yeah, Maybe just to so. get test his, uh, his strength out now, given that Go has captured now, a lot of Pokemon. That'll be, now, that would be funny. He, here's, another, here's another thing. I know this is not going to, this is not exactly like tied into it. But I think the reason, the other reason why they have Suicune is to promote the planetarium show that's going right. to be in the planetariums in Japan because there's right. because the call from the Alo the Aurora. Yeah, we got um, a bit of a preview on, that on show. YouTube. It's something you guys should definitely watch if you haven't had a chance yet. Yeah, it's actually yeah, it's actually 360 video because it's actually it's supposed to be projected onto a a planetarium like overhead. So <laughs> it's really cool. You should check that out. Pocketmonsters.net. We have I love how I love how big of a Boro Ghost Pokedex it states, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> now, all right, we got that out of the way. The legendaries are out of the picture. I know they're gonna fuck up continuity too, because I know they're they're supposed to be two Mewtwo's, right? One in Yanova, one in Kanto. Mm -hmm. This Mewtwo's not gonna be related to. No, that's why we're saying. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. Mew's yeah. gonna transform it's into Mewtwo, to and it's gonna keep the canon safe and sound. Oh, if God. that's what the writing's gonna go for, <laughs> but I don't know that. I, I guess I, I hate when they bring Mewtwo in the. They end, never right? did though. They only brought. No, it I'm in saying that I hate. No, I'm talking about like in movies. And I hate just Mewtwo being on screen. Well, technically, well, technically, on. well, technically, if we're talking about Pokemon the movie the seventy when when you have the rockets thing been exploded and we see that one mm -hmm. scene that was cut from the movie on in the episode. Yeah, realistically, I mean, my point, my point being, I hate when Mewtwo shows up on He's screen. Like, there's only on supposed to be one. Media. He was genetically created. Not even created. just that. It just. Not even just yeah. that. The Genesec movie kind of turned me off on Mewtwo. They originally like, planned on using the original Mewtwo, but I'm, because I'm of licensing, of yeah, they couldn't. Which would have been so freaking badass if they had. Why? Why licensing? What? Um, uh, Takashi Shudo's. Uh, uh, let's see. The Takashi Shudo's estate didn't allow it. Yeah, initially oh. they had right. planned yeah, for that right. original Mewtwo to have been in the film. It's one of those moments where corporate fucks up with narrative. Really? Mm -hmm. So they can't, yes. they can't do anything? Is that why no, they have No, no, no. They ended up negotiating later for movie 22. But oh. the, see, the thing again, is, it was a negotiation. It's one of those moments, like I said again, where corporate fucks up narrative. There was a battle between corporate and narrative and corporate war. Sadly, money talks, buddy. Yeah, money talks more than continuity. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let me read a little bit about this upcoming swoosh arc that's going to be happening soon. Swoosh. Because uh, it is a very important deal, in my opinion. I, I, I believe so, anyway. Because uh, this is going to be the first main big arc yeah, we have arcs in this story that are longer than two episodes happening now. That's going to be titled The Sword and Shield Chapter. Now, it is it is an arc, but they call it The Sword and Shield Chapter, which will be airing on October 23rd, or starting on that day. Damn, that's so... Yeah, so here's the thing. Here's the excerpt we got so far. 
the giant-sized Pokemon are rampaging about, Satoshi and Go set off to research the strange phenomenon taking place there in the Galar region. Once they arrive, our heroes come face to face with a giant rampaging Pokemon themselves. In order to save everyone from this danger, Satoshi fights alongside the King Dunde while Go works with the aspiring Pokemon professor Sonia to try to unravel the mystery behind what is going on. It turns out, the rampage is being caused by an organization scheming behind the scenes to recreate the Black Knight, a great catastrophe that befell the Galar region a long, long time ago. Once all the mysteries are solved, the revival of the great catastrophe will roar across the land. What the hell is with this countdown here? <laughs> Just as it seems as though the entire People. Galar region is being thrown in a whirlwind of chaos, the two legendary heroes awaken from this slumber. All right, so that's what we got so far. I will also grab these images as well just to show it off here on the stream because I think many people might want to take a look at exactly what it is that we will be expecting. I think this is the first time they've genuinely done something like this before where they just straight up call an upcoming arc, even show preview images of what is to come. Uh... Episode end? Not, not to like. Uh, no, 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 not that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but this is not the first time that they called an arc an arc. I mean, this is. I mean, this is the yeah, this is the first time for this series. But it's like, they they, 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 they think this is a new thing. No, this is the same thing with episode end with the whole preview. This feels like it should have been a movie. It looks like it should have been a movie. It has the quality to look like a movie. Well, it has the quality. Well, of the and movie. and think and think about it this way. Uh, let's see. Let's 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 do it. Let's break it down like the Netflix seasons, right? So we have, uh, one through twelve was season one. Thirteen to twenty four. Twenty thirteen twenty five is the second one, right? It'll be 25 to 37 and 38 onwards. That could be the season four. So, Kevin, mm -hmm. how did you feel about that? Or, 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 part, or I should say part four of season 23, because technically it's different parts. So it'll be the last, it'll be the last part of the, the dub season, if you want to call it like All that. All right. Well, what'd you say, Polly? So uh, I think everyone wants to know, how do you feel about this? All right, I'm going to give a bit of a heads up real quick. I have a bit of uh -oh. a small little head pain going on. Uh, so I don't think screaming. Why do I feel like I'm going to agree? Why do I feel like I'm going to agree? Now, with you? I just want to clarify, I'm not going to be screaming or anything, only because just for my own sake, I don't want to hurt myself or something. So I apologize for that. <laughs> um, but I do still want to at least get my message across. Oh, All oh, right, oh. so... I don't know what it is recently, but a lot of people have been really pushing this quote I said on social media lately. I don't know if you guys noticed what I wrote that a lot of people have been stating here. And this is what I said uh, a while back. Um, and some of my buddies like uh, Ben, of course, and Raph and many other people have been, uh, have been really taken into consideration. And they're also starting to sort of see this as well. Uh, with this upcoming arc, if I can just grab it for just a second, just so I could sh uh, just read word for word for you guys. Uh, this will be a better way for me to get it out of the way. So, uh, PM 2019, finally having its big arc. This is going to be a weird time, honestly, only because I, I find this odd that it's happening in year one. I don't know why it's happening in year one. This is where things are getting confusing for me. Because I feel like they're trying to get a lot of the narrative out of the way for Sword and Shield storyline so quickly. Which is so awkward for me. But here's what I wrote in the text. Uh, somebody uh, under the name of Mele or Mele Picanair, which is an actual great name there, not gonna lie. So they wrote here, is Ash training for B at all lately? I mean, he went to Alola, helped go get Flygon, and is helping Kohara with a research paper... But where is the training? And do we take his word that he's been training off screen? The build up to the rematch has been rather poor to be honest. And this is why. Now, I replied back to that. And I wrote here. And this is my biggest issue with this series. I just assume that at this point, all of the major development and story driven narratives are pretty much taking care on off screen land rather than on screen 
Example being of Ghost's first official Pokemon battle win against the Karate Master that we had a couple of episodes before. And the one line everybody's been taking from me is, I love the episodes, but not the series. Stating, I love the show's episodes when I view them alone. Remember in the Alola episode when we did the review, I stated I give, as a fan of the Sun and Moon anime series, I give that episode a 10 out of 10. But as a Journeys episode with where we are currently at, at this very moment, I gave it a 5 out of 10. Because it made no sense for... I said something similar in the review. Yeah, and I I made sure to say that for you, buddy. Um, And I stated in the review that, listen, I like it, but like, it, there's no real narrative purpose in the current timeline, especially when we're in the middle of an arc that we're supposed to kind of clear up before we jump into another one, yet there doesn't feel like there's really anything happening whatsoever. We even got the preview for next week's episode. We didn't tackle upon that. Um, that addresses the upcoming rematch fight. Apparently, Ash already goes back to super class in next week's episode. Bruh. Which that would imply that Ash either whoops some trainers Ash within the span of like a couple of seconds and just show little slideshows. Hey, well, I got back up to super class. Now I'm going to go and try to see if I can win against B. Which, by the way, the fight against B heavily showcases that it's going to be Pikachu Let and Riolu. So Farfetch is not getting any development whatsoever in that. No, no little respect back for the bird whatsoever. That, that bums me the fuck out, man. I'm so disappointed by that. But getting back into the actual, um, into the actual sword and shield story, I do apologize for jumping all over the place, but I just want to try to see if I can get everything that I uh, want to say across. So, uh, I do apologize for that. Now, let's get into this. So, sword and shield, they are having the darkest day arc in, in starting like around episode 40, 42, somewhere around that line. Point is, it's happening really soon. I I know for a fact, I could tell you right now, I know for a fact that I will be enjoying those episodes and that arc on its own. Uh-huh. Individually, when I remove everything that is Journeys. But uh-huh. I can't view this within the context of the series and where we are at currently because there was barely any sign of build up to this. We had like two little snippets of it in this show. The first one being when Ash and Go went to Galar for the very first time and they saw a little sneak peek of Eternatus. And the second time being that one and like to three minute sentence that uh, Sonya brought up regarding the Darkest Day lore, oh, yeah. if you remember from the Galarian Farfetch capture episode. Ever since then, yes. we have not seen the Galar, the Galar Regis Professor. We have not visited many towns. We have not visited many attractive locations that connect to the story's lore of Sword and Shield. Hell, we haven't even seen the gym leaders, many of the gym leaders, I should say, from the Galar region yet. Yeah. And you know, in the Pokemon Sword and Shield games, they were heavily focused in that arc when the Pokemon were going on a rampage, if you recall correctly. You had to go from uh, town to town to try to calm down all of the rampaging Pokemon. And it feels like they're just kind of squeezing so much into just four episodes. I mean, hell, let's look back into previous arcs that we've had within past generations, okay? Let's take a look in uh, Pokemon mm-hmm. Sun and Moon. I know not many people might be a big fan of it, but let's just let's just bring this into context real quick. Nebby's arc mm-hmm. took 12 episodes to kind of get its narrative story across. They didn't try to shove that into four episodes. They tried to get as much as they possibly can for the story within the span of 12 episodes. And Poipo's arc, I'm not calling it Necrozma's arc because theoretically this is Poipo's storyline, therefore Poipo's arc took about 30 episodes to cover. And you're expecting me to believe that they could cram the lore, the region, the theming, The storytelling, the woes, all of that in just under four episodes with just one to two minor moments in episodes. And this is where things stop there because somebody replied to me saying, let's be fair, the Sword and Shield storyline was actually pretty bad. And I stated to them, yeah, that is correct. 
Sword and Shield storyline honestly blows. But guess what? Let's go and take a little bit into uh, the X and Y generation. Guess what? Ah, oh, shit. The plot for Kalos was absolute shit in the video games. But you know what the but anime, the anime did? did a fire ass job on exactly. that bitch. Exactly. They, <laughs> yeah. they expanded. Except Serena, sorry. They expanded. Uh, no, upon... no, Serena was a part of that story too. No, you can't exclude yeah, her. They... Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but the, the anime. No, the anime, no, talking, the anime did the, video game the Team plot. Flare plot and Lysander's plot right. I'm not talking about the characters. I'm talking about the villains. We're talking yeah, about the talking main about the core video. of yeah, the storyline. Team yeah. Flare the and video Lysander. Game the game, the game. Yeah, yeah, but you, but then, but then you went, but but then you went into like a sub a sub thing where you said the anime. So no, no, that's the, what no, I'm no, no, saying. No, 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 he's saying. Oh, the anime's interpretation of how they did Team Flare was much better than video games interpretation of yes, how they did Yes, I, I agree with yeah, that. I yeah. never said yes. anything about the so characters. I only just said, said yeah. I only just said the the evil theme, the evil teams, I'm sorry. And the main the villain. They did X, Y, and Z storytelling with the Team Flare stuff beautifully. And as someone who didn't really enjoy X and Y's game that much, that's saying a lot. Sun and Moon. Yeah, and I can I can say this, and hell, I can say this. Um, I didn't watch a lot. I remember I stopped watching Sun and Moon, but what did it, what's that one arc that I said that I always watch? I watched the Sogaleo arc because that's the main plot of uh, Sun and Moon. But they did that right. They they did that video game plot well, hence why I watched it. Hence why I reviewed it, because they actually did that arc well. So And they didn't do it in just like four episodes. They, they did an arc, and it... Tied into Lily being too afraid to touch Pokemon. They tried to which do a came lot into the, in Sunny Moon Story. But yeah, which came into the Savali plot, which came into the Cosmog plot, which came into the whole uh, Ultra Beast situation. So, like, yeah, Sun and Moon and X and Y both did theirs correctly. So Journeys has no excuses. Yeah, as, as, that's why this is my big issue right now, because it's like, Journeys... The best way to describe Journeys for me personally, and I said this before in the past, Potential, the series. It screams yeah. Potential. Oh, Everything yeah. I, is well, placed on the, the table. Everything right then and there is ready to go out and release bangers. And I will say, I loved all of the episodes, if not most of the episodes, I should say all the episodes, most of the episodes from the series when I view the episode as what they're intending to create as an episodic series, if they're doing yeah. that perfectly fine, I can understand that. As in, as viewing it episodically, I've been enjoying the episodes. The moment you decide to try to make me look at it as a complete storyline from beginning to end is rather, well, a mess. It is a it's like really that one situation. mess, honestly. It's like that one situation where, like, when you have a pizza, but for some reason there's that person who picks off the pepperonis and eats them, but not the pizza itself. Hey, <laughs> that, listen, don't try to me. That's it's journeys. Very, <laughs> the buildup is, like, very overwhelming between the opening and the, the all the... I mean, the previews are, are another thing, but... um. And then the Annie Polk PR Twitter account keeps it. They keep spoiling things for us that I, I, I would have liked to see on my own. You know, like, like the baby. They spoiled that. The baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I will. I will. I will agree with that too. I that, feel like, like there's a lot of build up, and then it pictures, kind of falls flat. Showing all yeah. these pictures are nice, but Polly just brought up a good point. Showing these pictures are nice, but it kind of fucks up the. Yeah. And that brings up the what TSS said before is like. That's because they they show so much it kind of fucks up with our yeah and you stuff. learn you, you raise your expectations and then it's not really what you you want yeah, it right don't do that because we're getting yeah, spoiled that, that's that's why that's why you have to keep a low expectation but, but exactly. why though now, why must I have to thing. lower my expectations for something that could yeah. be great and know it, it could be mm -hmm. great and because they've done this before in the past hell because because this is different. I know it's again different. They're, they're going a different direction. They're going a different direction. But does direction. that make it right? Is that the right decision, though? Well, to me, here. Well, okay. So, I, I, yeah, so let let's, so let's go. On so let's go on a little. Let's no. Let's go on a little tangent right now because I actually did all the fucking research because we all because um, ever since the time slot change, 
Pokemon has only been able to hit in the ratings eight times. And we're talking about, let's see, by the time, by the time we get to the time change, it will be uh, 104 weeks. Out of those 104 weeks, it only has hit the charts eight times. And we're talking about not only not only because of that, and, and uh, PM2019 has only hit the chart. Uh, today, uh, last week's episode actually got a, let's see, it got a, a 2.4, which is pretty low. But before that, they they uh they uh, it only charted one more one other time and that would have been the December 29th episode which you got a 2.2 but ever since the time change it has only gotten 3. Point, uh, over 3 once and i actually did all this research today uh because uh, uh there's a japanese website that that uh, does like the kanto um the the kanto ratings for the television series and um, everything after the time change, the time change got 3.1. Everything after that, which it charted, well, Sun and Moon charted six times. Actually, no, five times. And it got under three. So first of all, having it moved to Friday, like as I said last week, was a great choice. Um, however, again, um, looking at Journeys as an episodic, it's great. Um, trying to put all the pieces together and especially after the fucking Backstreet Boys shit, which I believe that they had to shuffle things around and also probably the pressure from Netflix to actually get shit out. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they had to, they had to cut corners in order for them to make the episodic stories flow in somewhat of a, of a decent way. Because, like I said, some of them, some of them are random, but I think they needed to make them um, the way that they were because they because they were falling behind on production and they had to put episodes in a certain order so that it keeps spark the interest uh, and kind of moves the story along. Um, as for the sun and I'm oh, sorry, these this the swoosh thing. Um, mm -hmm. The thing is, though, we only know four episodes. Um, and also once again, and I have, and I have said this for the last several months, do not base anything on previews or summaries. Do not, because once again, they pull something out of their ass and it actually makes it, they actually make it very enjoyable. Now we don't know. Now we do not know if the arc is going to end after four episodes. So, so we only have, we don't, we only, we're only basing it off of like, what a uh, fucking TV guide scan. So we don't know when the hell this is going to end. So realistically, we shouldn't even be thinking about it like this for the first, for the, for the beginning. Cause we do not know when is it going to end? How is it going to end? So I would think we should be patient. Like I have been, I have been very patient and, and to be honest, I think it's a, a very good idea that they're doing it like this. Um, the episodic thing again, great. As for a whole, kind of feels disjointed. But hopefully, in the hopefully later on, hopefully after this specific arc, um, I'm hoping that they're going to get their act together. But it all depends on uh, how much the Backstreet Boys tickets uh, continue until yeah, next now, year. So we'll see what happens. I want to take a opportunity to talk about one bit you said about the arc potentially oh, wait, being before over. We, before we're we gone, uh, buddy. Rich? Before. Uh, before before we do that, obviously, thank you, Mr. Tassel, for the subscription. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you, Tassel. Yeah, I already said thanks, thanks to for mm -hmm. thank you once again, buddy. Okay, just want to make sure we get yeah, that out of the way. Of course. Anyways, continue. Um, so to clear out that one little bit regarding if this is going to be the conclusion of the arc, there was the synopsis, an extra synopsis that came out that also talks a little bit about it, saying when all the mysteries are unraveled. The catastrophe roars for resurrection. Two heroes wake up from a long sleep as a vortex of chaos covers the entire Galar region. That implies that if nothing happens yeah. here, if they lose, then the, then the Galar region is pretty no. much messed up because it's stating there that no. the, the, the but yeah, the the inciting incident might happen, but it might it might take a couple of more episodes after this so you don't know no, i'm just saying like just judging it from how they're writing it here for this and i once again i know you yeah, said this they, before with the other thing can't. You can't. because because here's the thing we've had we've had summaries we've had summaries a few months ago and we were dead wrong so 
Again, that's why I say well, never. Then that begs the question, though: Why would they go out of the way to write a summary? What's because, the point? because it's supposed to be over. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be one of those implied yeah, open ended for ones. For a reason, it, it's exaggerated. I mean, anything Japanese is exaggerated. Anything in the media, exaggerated for a reason to get then everybody don't, into it. But but then don't get then don't put it up because people are gonna get like whether you want well, it or well, not, okay, people are okay, gonna but, get excited about it because it's yeah, over exaggerated. Yeah, but the thing is though, it's the thing is though, it's in a fucking ten dollar magazine. Then wh that why the fuck people want to read it uh, outside of Japan just to get a freaking you know just to just well, to, you know that's it. It's a fucking it's a fucking brand. It's gonna be dedicated though. Like yeah, that's, there is gonna be dedicated fans. Right. But again, the problem the problem is we the, the problem is you we're we're going too much. We're, 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 we're trying to investigate too much into this shit. And I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, when I uh, did my sep when I did my stream, I was streaming a com uh, completely different game, wasn't even on topic of Pokemon. I had people flooding me going, Tyrone, did you see the poster? Did you see the poster? What'd yeah, you because, because that's, because that's like, the narrative now. That, that's I'm like, that. holy shit, I just saw it now, that's, and that's I been, had my thoughts. It's <laughs> been the narrative since X and Y, because, again, it's because of how news is spread now because you go back because you if you go back to the dp era or the ag era everything was a mystery everything was pretty much a mystery because there was no there was no real platform to share it on now with internet well with internet access being the way it is and social media being the way it is of course there are going to be people that share it but only because they want to to bring to to bring either uh false pretenses which has actually happened we're freaking mistranslated on purpose. We've actually had that happen where shit is mistranslated or yeah. just having things in general. So again, that's why I say, you know, all of these summaries are written as kind of mysteriously open-ended things where some of the stuff is not even translatable in the right, in the right context because you barely have any context to begin with. Yeah. So to again, me. that's what it is. Yeah, to me, and you're just regarding the Darkest Day arc, from what we know, not from what we don't know yet, I saw the Darkest Day stuff in the opening. We all did when the yeah. openings came out, right? Absolutely, even, but we don't know even, how that's going to happen. I, mean, right, we don't know. Right, right, right. I know, I know. Even when I saw the opening, though, my eyebrow raised because it was so... It was so Sudden? Out of all the things, yeah, out of all the things that happened in that opening, the sun and moon cast being reintroduced, Beesh, Beesh being shown off, some of Go's new Pokemon, that was the thing that stuck out to me the most was the Darkest Day arc being shown off. Because I'm like, oh, they just sort of, one, it's really early to do this, and two, when they showed it off, it shows up and then leaves almost as immediately as it showed off. It's almost like it was an afterthought. I want I, <laughs> I want to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also rebuttal the whole thing. The posters, yes, we already know the evolutions, but the thing is, though, we don't know exactly how. Oh, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. The thing is, though, yes, and yes, I am aware that they do this exaggerated thing just to, you know, on social media just to get attention. Fine. Everybody's an attention whore. That's perfectly fine. But it's like, again, I have, I, I have, I have my views because I'm an old, I'm from the fucking old school fucking shit. I've been watching the Japanese series now for 16 fucking years. And I know exactly how things were back in 04 to now. And shit has changed completely. Like, it, like it's a completely different environment than it was. It's more toxic. It has more uh, ability, uh, more, more opportunities for people to jack people, jack people up and jack people off for no reason, which I don't personally like. But again, but again that's my opinion. And that's, and, and that's what it is. So continue, Tyrone. Yeah, but um, yeah, like like even then, I was like, oh, this is uh, they're showing this off in the opening kind of early. Like this is uh, and then the minute they show it off, they go straight back to like fun reboot and reolu and the ad even fun. Yeah, it almost felt like an afterthought, and I'm like, uh oh. Like I said, uh oh, and obviously I'm saying uh oh without any knowledge, so I'm going in ignorant. I know that, but I said uh oh because I I'm. I'm getting this weird feeling about how they're going to handle it. And I looked back at how the plot is being handled in the video game. Now, that was, KG brought up the point that I was going to bring up. Where in the video game, if you separate the journey from the story beats, there's not really a lot that happens no. in yeah. Sword and Shield. Not a lot. Because all of it is literally skimmed over by story beats. There's some things you're going to miss. You're going to miss Marnie. 
You're going to miss Bede. You're going to miss Pierce. The gym leaders. You're going to miss all. Yeah, you're going to miss basically the characters. Mm. But what you're not going to miss is um, if they hit the story beats, you're going to, you're going to, you're not going to miss the history of Galar. You're not going to miss Oleana, uh, Oleana, Oleana, what her name is. Yeah. And Chairman Rose's whole discussion of the darkest day. You're going to get the whole, um, I was, I was thinking they would say this for the finals for this uh, championship round, just like they do with in the games. Because it's an integral part. Because um, they push it simply so that uh, Chairman Rose can wait. Because he couldn't wait one day. That's literally the, the boiling point is that he couldn't wait one day. So he released Eternius early. <laughs> which caused everything to get fucked. But here, it's hmm. just sort of in the wild. But here, it, it, it's like Ash, I assume, is still going to be super class at this point. Right. So it's just like, okay, if you want to do such an important plot so early, go for it. But that means you're running into some risk. Risk that narratively I know are going to have problems in it. Like, it just, Reboot and Riolu more specifically are going to evolve, obviously. We don't know how they're going to evolve. They'll probably evolve in the midst of battle. Who knows? But when that happens, the only thing afterwards they'll have to show for it, like it's going to be really jarring to see the the darkest day, and then uh, let's say the last episode of the darkest day shows up, and Ash and Go are off on a on a I don't know an island playing basketball with a fucking persimmon or some shit, like 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 something very. It's going to feel very jarring. It's going to be like that Bee's uh, Pikachu episode situation where Bee's episode ended, and then we we cut the Pikachu's. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I think the other I think the other issue realistically is that since we lost six weeks, they kind of have to get the they they want to get the um Eternatus stuff. They want to get the juicy plot in here before yes. we, they lose audience. I got and, it. And and also and also they have to and also they have to plug and promote the DLC too. So again, it has to it, it the the fun the the fucked up part is that even though we're technically we're not on the freaking timeline, it appears that we are still on the freaking game timeline. Even though this is not, it's not have, tied the into series the is not. Issue. It's not tied into it exclusively. Like so, so I just things. realized. I just realized something. If the Battery Boys thing didn't hit, and we had got this, we would have gotten this six weeks early. Holy shit! Not, not necessarily. We would be in the plot right now. We would be in the final episode. <laughs> not, <laughs> we'd be well, in the darkest not, day. Well, not necessarily. Well, we'd be near it or not in its well, area. No, because no, because then we would actually have like, if if they didn't, it, it, I would could imagine that. They could have spaced it out better if they didn't have this six week problem. If they had to, if they had to rush it, because they're, they're saying that there, there was no production rushing, but I think that's I think bullshit, they're just saying that just honestly. to not scare people off. Yeah, and also, and also, it's not to you know just to save face. I would say that if we had an extra six weeks and then the plot, then this arc happened at the same time as what we did, as what we're having it now. Um, I think the I think I think the bridge between that gap wouldn't feel as jarring as it as it did here. The thing is, so. though, the it wouldn't matter with those six episodes anyway, because like the series is episodic. <laughs> like narrative wise, yeah. they don't yeah. still serve a purpose. It's just going to be six or extra episodes. Okay, we're going to be in episode forty six or something at this point before the darkest day arc happens. But it's like. Did we really gain anything out of that? It's just more so just six weeks of fluff if we put it into that perspective. Are you on Grace? No, that would imply that they could have done it now. Which, by the way, speaking oh. of the Darkest Day plot, notice how Reboot's there and not Cinderace at the moment? Oh, yes, yeah, so he's like I said, he's probably so going to evolve means mid. would have still been a Reboot during those six episodes of fluff we had. Probably Riolo as well. You don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm just so conflicted by this because I feel like the 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 biggest issue with this, and I think Sunny Moon was lucky enough to have this, is that they had a third regional legendary. Oh yeah, Necros. I didn't really care for the Necros mark, but yeah, they had Necros. Yeah, that means they had something else to bounce on. If say this, oh yeah, but yeah, yeah, here, yeah. Well, Eternatus is just sort of the the final one. I mean, for the Sword and Shield well, story, no, they, it is. Yeah, they're still gonna. They're probably gonna implement the. Uh, I can't remember. Islands of Armor and Crown. Yeah, Tundra I understand that, but I mean, like, for the lore of Sword and Shield, for the lore of Galar, 
you're just trying to put all of that in just four episodes, man. I was like, it's an important story mode, and I think it, I personally think it's too early to put it in because it, it wouldn't mean, I mean anything really, in the end. Like, let me put it in this way: after this is done, do I really want to learn about the lore after you had already saved the world? No, not really, the, because the, you already completed it. What purpose would all this narrative bring, and, really? Because nothing at the end of the day will mean anything. And in its boldest claim, and un, and this is because they decide to do something different, which in some cases can be good, but in its boldest claim, this should have been Ash and Go in Galar. Like, the whole series should have just taken place in Galar and said, fuck it all, because then they could have done more. And it feels like their Galar trips are limited to, like, they're, the narrative, well, the Galar narrative is limited to when Ash and go visit Galar. To be fair, though, the, to be fair, though, realistically, the Galar stuff doesn't have enough meat to really warrant a three-year series. I don't think that's why they do the it. the anime at that point to decide that, not us. Like, we, we can't make that decision. Like, Ash could have easily, just as easily done some stuff in Galar to make decisions. He could have been tra training for... Well, Go's goal is to catch every Pokemon, right? So at that point, literally, all the most of the episodes could have been about him tra capturing Pokemon in different aspects of Galar. And then in between those, we got those woven as Ash taking on either A, the Gym Challenge tournaments, or B, training to take on other Gym Challenge tournaments, or hell, done the Pokemon World Championship just in Galar, though. Like, they had options. They, they were never without them, and they could have even, even studied under Professor Magnolia while being in the same research laboratory as Sonya. They have options. They just didn't compliment on them. I mean, Zygarde didn't make an appearance in X and Y at all, but in the anime, he plays a huge role. So it's not really up to us. They had, like, they, they you know what's the biggest thing to also think about? They had everything written out before these things were even created. They knew what they were getting themselves into. They knew what they had in yeah. mind when making this Darkest Day arc. That implies that they could have at least tried to, you know, done something to kind of lead it to this arc a little bit more. Because, technically speaking, the only thing we really got out of it was the tease from that chairman rose the little tease of eternatus and then like that one minute conversation about the the lore of the darkest day and that's all we got for galar we never got to see any really remarkable places uh, attractions that really expand upon the lore prior to this it, it was all just sort of thrown there and what made sword and shield story so beautiful was just personally in my opinion was the characters that drove the story forward. And mm. sadly, that's just not happening, man. <laughs> you know, it's funny, ironically enough, Sword and Shield's biggest moment uh, as a video game isn't its story, it's the characters. Yeah. And they have like a buttload of characters they can use and experiment with. Hell, Twilight Wings prove that these characters have depth. Yeah, I think they're using that as the as the... Yeah, I'm, I'm realizing that too, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, but that's why they worked on it. That's I think that's why, because again, the you know, 2019 is taking a different direction, and that's what that's what we have to oh, deal yeah. with. I, I'm still like I told you, so, TSS. I that, that's I you know, yeah, it, it, it's really yeah, it's it's really defend yeah. The the thing is though, being being very different and divisive is making it making it really fun to actually talk about it, even though a lot of people don't agree with what everybody thinks about it. But I think that's, I think that's what makes this series great. It'll, it'll be, it'll be remembered for being, having, having the most, uh, being the most talked about series because it's better than some other series where you can clearly, you can clearly see what, which camps people are in. And here we can't even we can't even do that because everybody because we're in like position A like KG's in position A I'm in position C Tyrone's in position B Richie's in position X yes. like it's like completely fucking different Polly's in is, is in two is in, is in for P some reason she went to a number yeah two <laughs> she went to a number she went she went she I'll went to a hex she went she went to hexadecimal numbers that's what happened so it it is that but but realistically just to have. You know, we just talked about we just talked about freaking PM twenty nineteen now for an hour and a fucking half. You know, if we were talking about any other series, it wouldn't have gone this long. Especially, and we only been talking about like five or six upcoming episodes, and that's it. So 
Yeah, we can't. I mean, I mean, there's lots of things where we can't even spend. We can't even spend an hour and a half or two hours on an entire previous series because because it would just be over. Here we have differing we have differing viewpoints, and that's what causes us to go over time a yeah, lot of times. Yeah, just as now, which is why we're probably gonna wrap things up soon. Also, we're gonna talk about we're gonna mm -hmm. talk uh, next week. We're gonna talk about Mezastar because we have more stuff for it. So look forward to that. That's the new. That's the that's once again the arcade game replacing uh, Galilee. Mm -hmm. There's more videos and stuff. We're gonna talk about. I that think more Jordan won the best. Probably describe journeys in the best way possible. I'm at 810 for this series. It has problems, but I puke it. <laughs> like it. <laughs> but I puke. Yeah. Uh okay, 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 cool. Can we have a can we have a can we have a picture of like go vomiting? Oh yeah, this little this, this sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't falling asleep, I'd do it. <laughs> oh my god. So oh, we oh, hope goodness. you guys enjoyed our conversation for tonight. I I, I hope people got what they wanted to or they they wanted to hear what we wanted to say, you know. And I, once again, I do apologize if I wasn't in like my maximum rainbow mode that I normally am. It's more so as I told you, I, I have a little bit of a pain, so I, I don't want to hurt myself that much with the screaming and stuff. But I still wanted to at yeah. least get my message across as to what I'm thinking. No, you and, did. Uh, I also you wanted did. to hear everybody's ears. Like, you well. screamed enough in the tweet. Here's the thing: we 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 we. I would if I truly didn't care. If I truly didn't care about the state of the series, I would be silent right now. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I would be silent. I say these things because I care. And mm. I say them because Journeys has so much beautiful potential. You have made a series where the idea here is that Ash and Co. are going to different spots and the world, Pokemon is an expansive universe. If you take into account every region that has existed, it is a very expansive universe that you have created out of pure fiction that has expanded across a line of 20 plus years. So if you're not gonna double down on those opportunities that literally the show is giving to, uh, the show is being given from all regions and also uh, episodes of the anime, then it's like, you, it's weird to make a series that revolves around traveling in this animated world. Now, I'm not talking strictly about the games, I'm talking about the anime world that the Pokemon anime has established over 20 plus years and you barely touch the surface of mm -hmm. it. But now you want to do a big, huge, darkest day plot. <laughs> you know what the best way to describe all of this is? Think of it what? like this. You, you know that weird theory everybody has where, like, all the Pokemon franchises and regions are going to come together for, like, one super humongous game? And then mm -hmm. they try to do mm -hmm. it, and then it's a shit of a mess because they try to yeah. cram in, like, eight generations of storytelling into one game. That's what Journeys yeah. feels so like. Any... They, they have the papers yeah. there. They have the things set down. And when they hit, they hit though. Like I said, when, yeah. When they when they do good, they do good. Like I said, Go recently has been getting better as a character. It's the I anti end game. <laughs> well, wait, start game. There we go. Or some shit. The start game. We're in the start game now. Mm. Overall, we're excited for what is to come, but we're also concerned, and we're just expressing our concerns here in tonight's pod because. We love this series. We I mean, and we could and we could be we could be dead wrong. This arc could be the shit. Yeah, or it could be <laughs> the shit. Shit. No, no, what? no. It, no, no. It could be the shit or plain shit. I True. always found that the best arcs were the ones I never saw coming. You never see it coming. Like, yeah, I agree with that. I didn't think the Team Flare arc was going to be as big as it was. Nobody did. Yeah. Everybody was no, hoping it would happen, but nobody I expected it, it to be, be to this them, extent. I thought it was just going to be Ash and them fighting a couple of grunts and calling it a day. I didn't expect fucking every gym leader from Kalos to show yeah. the fuck up fighting Rock yeah. Zygarde. Yeah, yeah, well, that happens. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. All so, right. Uh, I think it's time yeah. to wrap things up. Yeah, let's go ahead and call it All right. night. With that being Woo! said, I just got a news thing here. It says Nintendo has issued a DMCA takedown to an adult-themed Princess Peach game that received updates for over eight years. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I oh, saw that. Yeah. Uh, that was something, I guess. <laughs> that was that, that, yeah, so that's why, you know, that, that's why <laughs> keeping on new grounds forever. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, I don't think I will. Yeah, I, I, I'm done. I, I, I want to go to bed now. So I'm going to go to bed. Yeah. Oh, God, my head hurts, bro. <laughs> but thank you, everybody, for being with us here tonight. I hope everybody uh, enjoyed our little rambles. And hopefully, you know, we got to say what we wanted to say. Obviously, we have more weeks to come before we uh we eventually get to the darkest day plot so obviously we'll get more information and if more information comes out we'll definitely update you guys more in regards to that we'll talk more share more opinions maybe refine some thoughts we said in today's conversation into uh future conversations but as of now these are just simply our takes as i stated before we got into the conversation take all of this with a grain of salt we could completely make a uh, pure 180 sometime later down the road because if it turns out really good i will gladly accept my uh my take on this thing and be like i'm sorry then in the anime thing was good yeah i know people are talking about anime pod we're working on that for this week because we have to react to the snafu stuff don't worry we're getting to that um but before we go let me go and say thanks to everybody here in the call uh tyrone the god three tss uh richie or our folly dude 97 if i'm correct uh age of trades yep. thank you guys so much for being here tonight i hope uh, everybody had a good session for tonight and uh yeah if you ever want to hear more of our silly shenanigans always make sure to uh tune in every monday nights at 10 p.m and you'll always see us here for another fun round hopefully by then i'll feel a wee bit better to continue doing my little more rambles as you guys seem to enjoy for some odd reason oh. <laughs> <laughs> Also, also, folks, remember that uh, next Sunday is going to be the last episode on the Sunday slot. After that, the following week will be oh, on shit. Friday, starting on Friday. So um, during the during um, the original broadcast of this episode today, um, they noted that it was going to be specially put uh, a, a, a broadcast. They gave the broadcast date specifically because they know that they're going to be moving to Friday. So right. next week is going to be the last so this episode coming up is going to be the last episode on a Sunday slot. So well, enjoy. It's it. going to be ending on mm -hmm. a banger because it's going to be on a B fight. Friday. Maybe, maybe yeah. will it be a banger? But we know Mr. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Chuck Stir is coming. Sadly, not done by the. Yeah, but it's not going to be. It, but it's, it's not going to be the same. Nah, I'm though. bummed out by that. I know he's hella rich to get uh, recently, but it would have been nice to see him. I'm Chuck <laughs> Stir. <laughs> Tyrone, you're going to love that level when you get to it, buddy. Oh my God. Yeah, so yeah, uh, somebody yeah. says, wash your goddamn hands. Indeed. All right, then, everybody. Thanks, to everyone, for tuning in for tonight. My name is KG Prestige. Once again, thank you guys for helping us reach over to 700 followers here on this platform. It is absolutely incredible to see you guys show so much love and support. Uh, thank you for tuning in, you know, spamming those cute little emojis we got. If you haven't, subscribe here to the channel to have some fun with those cute little emojis. You even get a cute little Gumi icon as well alongside your name so if you like to have a cute little gumi icon with you now's the perfect opportunity to try that out uh we also of course will be back for some more silly shenanigans later in the week for legend of zelda breath of the wild uh more of the mayro madness and uh anything else in between so i'll talk with all of you guys later in whatever video we make take care everybody and as always make sure to have yourself an awesome day bye bye Ever wash, and wash your fucking hands after these scams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, right? Shit. <laughs>